When they finish it, they hope to be 12-0 and leave no doubt. Welcome to the Ford Fox Sports 1 College Football Pregame, sponsored by the Ford F-Series, built Ford Tough. The Marshall Thundering Herd, very tough here at Jones C. Edwards Stadium on campus in Huntington, West Virginia. Conference USA foes, they've won three in a row. The Western Kentucky Hilltoppers, really what it means, though, on a national scale is that Marshall is hoping to win this, this week, next week in their Conference USA Championship. Leave no doubt and play on New Year's Eve or play on New Year's Day. They've never played that late. Energy, early, often. As a matter of fact, it led to some fisticuffs between these two teams. We'll see how it all plays out. The officials had to sort things out. Some yellow hankies flew early on. Ah, the energy. Nothing like a rivalry to get things started. Hi there, folks. Welcome back on campus. A gentleman standing right next to me. I know he likes it. Coy Wire. For nearly a decade, a linebacker and a safety in the NFL. My name is Darren Sutton. Marshall defending their home turf just a minute ago, we saw it, but they're so tough here at home. They have a two-headed monster offensively, one of them Heisman candidate, but start us on the ground. That's where they're so very tough. Only Wisconsin's Melvin Gordon and Indiana's Tevin Coleman have more rush yards than Devin Johnson, but no one has more yards per carry than his 8.5. It leads the nation. He's a 240-pound freight train that's been emasculating would-be tacklers all season. This Hilltopper team is going to have their hands full. If they can slow his roll, here's the problem. Quarterback Rakeem Cato, one of college football's gems. He has become one of the most dynamic playmakers in all of college football. 13,000 plus yards and his consecutive 43 game streak with a touchdown pass is an FBS record. Hilltoppers have their hands full. I'll see your quarterback and raise you with one that's superior statistically. When you talk about Brandon Dowdy, this is a team that would love to spoil Marshall's perfect season. Brandon Dowdy's a guy who had 14 touchdown passes and 14 interceptions a season ago. This season, he's college football's most underrated statistical star. 36 touchdown passes to only eight interceptions. A big part of the reason this Western Kentucky offense has put up more points and more yards than any other in program history, he's going to throw the ball all over the yard today. On a Black Friday around this land, many are shopping. Marshall hopes that committee members and voters that they're watching because Marshall hopes that when it's all said and done, they'll be hanging around New Year's. If you're a member of the Thundering Herd staff as a player and a starter, you play on special teams. Back here at Joan C. Edwards Stadium, the special team kick team is out there for the Marshall Thundering Herd. And you may see a few empty benches, empty seats. Obviously, it's a holiday weekend for the students. Otherwise, Huntington, West Virginia has packed this place. There was snow through the night. It didn't stick. It's getting up above freezing. Heck, it's great football weather in West Virginia. Don't tell these folks otherwise, as we mentioned. Doc Holliday and this program. Accountability is everything. Has been rumored in the discussion down in Gainesville, Florida. Can recruit the heck out of the Sunshine State. But then again, so can Jeff Brom. A fabulous quarterback played at Louisville. An NFL career that was nearly a decade as well. Backed up Steve Young for the San Francisco 49ers. Fun and energy. That's what Brom is about. Marshall, for the first time, is showing a little bit more pep and energy in their step. Island Tower is back deep for Western Kentucky to return this kick. Hello there, folks. Let's play some college football. Certainly glad that you are with them. Tower from about the seven-yard line across the 25 to the 30. And goes down at about the 37-yard line, a return of 32 yards. Brandon Dowdy, he leads his offense onto the field with a big-time arm. Yeah, this guy has a big-time arm. You'll see him try to get some double moves, and they'll find creative ways to hit deep, but really his effectiveness is in his ability to get the ball out of his hand quickly. A lot of quick perimeter screens. They want to get this guy confident early. Look for them to do that here, something quick. He's got a big back that he works with in the backfield out of the shotgun. Top half, you'll see Leon Allen again over 230 pounds. I know he is important for Coy. Willie McNeil is in motion to the top side. Good protection and a first down.
Mitchell Henry hauls it in, a pickup of 11. Coy, who are we watching? Well, we're going to have to look at Willie McNeil, a wide receiver here in this Western Kentucky offense. His fifth most receiving yards in Western Kentucky history. And running back Leon Allen set his Conference USA single game record, 345 yards. And how about Neville Hewitt, the linebacker for the herd? And defensive tackle James Rouse. If there's some NFL talent on this field, those are your guys to watch. They're taking a look at Mitchell Henry, and that's very important. Looks like they're grabbing at the wrist. Let's see what happens. a good tackle on the play you had AJ Leggett come up and make a good solid tackle on the big tight end there and he's not really able to see what may have happened to him he look, does look like he's holding that wrist and forearm area but Henry is senior with 27 catches this year they need him this is their this this is their best all-around tight end you look at Tim Gorski and Tyler Higby, they bring a couple of other different things to the table uh, and each have their own specialty and unique ability, if you will. But Mitchell Henry, he's the guy that they can count on to get the job done, all around blocker, catcher, a little bit of everything that he does well. So right now the assignment goes to Tyler Higby, the redshirt junior who comes on out of Clearwater, Florida. You have to have the hands out there for Dowdy with as aggressive as he is with the football. Get that protection with the big man, Leon Allen, in the backfield. Trying to get it across midfield. And another first down for Western Kentucky. That's Jared Dangerfield who hauls it in and moves it forward. Pick up a 17. The Dangerfield was working one on one out there on the perimeter. And he did a great job of getting some space and separation from the defensive back. You see, it was a bit of a press bail, and he got a little bit of a push off there. This is a big guy. You're going to see a lot of that. He gets away with it. 6'3, 200 pounds. He's a force on the edge. Trips on the high side, but then motion has Dangerfield on the bottom half. Quick strike across the 30. Taylor moves it before he is taken out of bounds, and the offense for Western Kentucky on the move pick up a bait again. There you're seeing that quick hit, those quick passes. It's vital that they get Brandon Dowdy some confidence here. He's tremendously accurate in this scheme, 67% completion rate on the season. He's got that sense of timing on those perimeter screens, quick slants and hitches that we're going to see a lot of today. A pair in the backfield motion out of the backfield. Dowdy finds his tight end, can hold on, hard hit Tyler Higby, unable to haul that one in. Big stick, A.J. Leggett, and we'll be calling Neville Hewitt's name a lot as well. And yeah, Neville Hewitt is going to be all over the field today. Truly a, a guy who will likely play on Sundays. I mean, this guy's fun to watch. You saw him in there, the hit, the rap. He's only 218 pounds, but he hits like a truck. Turning it up, third and one. The first carry for the Leon senior Allen Leon the Allen to pick up a four, and a Hilltopper first down. Ball down to the 22, a first down for the Hilltoppers. I mean, this is a team that just, look, they've struggled defensively, and we'll touch on that, but they just score and score and score. Yeah, they've picked up the tempo a bit, they spread it out, did a great job of that coming off the Petrino's more of a pro-style scheme. It's been really effective for Dowdy. And yeah, they welcomed the one year Bobby Petrino. Everything that went on with it. Barreling forward, Leon Allen. Leon gain Allen of seven, 235 pounder. He was on the mind of Marshall defensively last night when they spoke about what goes on for Western Kentucky. And rightfully so. This is a, a big back, as you mentioned, 235. And if, if anything uh, has caused Marshall's defense to stumble a bit this year, it's been a bigger back. And that's what Leon Allen is. He can bring the thump. Dowdy, three for four to start things on this drive. It's Allen again. And he lose the football. On to the deck it goes. Crowd reacts. And they hold on to the football. It was a forced fumble. Daryl Roberts came in there and whacked it loose. Yeah, Daryl Roberts, you see him, you're gonna, he's going to come up and get the stick there low. And Leon Allen just lost the ball. Now, there was a bit of moisture on the field, that snow that was lying down earlier. Maybe that ball is a bit slick. But the herd so far flying around, okay? But what the Hilltoppers have done, they tried to attack the left side with the left side of their offensive line. They're liking the blocking up there. They went to a counter play last time to the left side. We'll see what they go to this time on third and one. 
Inside of the red zone on third and one. Allen cuts back and a second burst of energy. Jermaine Holmes looked like he moved past here. him. And it's a gain of a pair and it's a first down again. You're going to see that same play that they went to last time on third and one. There's your offensive tackle, number 62, Darrell Williams, who pulled on the last third and one and allowed them to get that first down with that big bat in Leon Allen. But this time it was a lot of second effort. You see him dragging some defenders there. That's two times in a row they went to that same play on third and one. That left side of the line is hitting. Williams just a sophomore, 6'6", 3'10". Dowdy loves it. Into the corner and a touchdown The to young man Higby. An 11-yard pickup, but plenty. He didn't start this game on the depth chart, yet he finished this drive in the end zone. This is exactly what the Hilltoppers needed to come in and establish a tone and a tempo for this game. This is a high-scoring offense. They want to put some doubt in the minds of this herd defense. And there you had Higby, the redshirt junior, coming up with a big play. He's a converted wideout. Now playing tight end, gave Taj Letman all he can handle there. Eric Schwetman with the extra point. Tyler Higby just one touchdown catch all season long coming in. Oh no, more than one now. Dowdy says, I need two, and he got it. From at 43 years old, uses the word fun all the time when describing his program. You know what's fun? For the Hilltoppers, this scoring drive, I mean, Literally almost unstopped. Nine plays, 62 yards. They ate up three minutes because there was some time on the ground. And then Higby with just his second touchdown catch of the season. As a matter of fact, started on the bench, came in as a tight end. And certainly Marshall looking to answer back. You saw DeAndre Reeves, one of a pair back for Marshall. And they've got kind of a nothing to lose attitude. So that one on the ground on a line drive. Remy Watson, the number two running back for the thundering herd takes it on out a return of nine here's a look at today's keys to the game brought to you by k jules so marshall herd's wide receivers they have to win versus press coverage they're going to get a lot of it and we'll see it here from western kentucky they got to lean on leon hill do the hilltoppers marshall defense has struggled with big backs feed leon allen okay and marshall's defensive backs they have to watch the double moves by western kentucky's wide receivers discipline with the eyes will be the key to this game for them Devin Johnson lines up in the backfield. Pair of wide receivers on the top side. Play action to Devin right away. Cato strikes deep, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Devontae Allen. Now again, Cato in and out of the discussion, and deservedly so, for the Heisman all season long. Yeah, I and mean, this guy just is, is, is so consistent with what he does. You see the pass completion right there, and it's, it's not spectacular. But this is a guy who has a tremendous football IQ. He gets this team in and out of the correct plays about 95% of the time, their offensive coordinator, Bill Legg, told us. Fun to watch. Across the middle, and it's picked off. Down to the 35-yard line. Brandon keeps moving. It's Leston still heading forward. Moving with the football and hits the dirt. Did he give it up on that turf? He did not. He was down. The ball was down. Two huge plays, Brandon Leston with a return of 29 yards on an interception. Listen was a guy we talked about earlier in before this game because he's going to be a difference maker on a lot of these crossing patterns. He's really coming to start to step up for this defense. You see Cato there trying to force a pass that wasn't there. Okay, and, and this is an outstanding job of the defense now keeping that momentum going that the offense found. He was trying to find his high school mate and his favorite target in Tommy Schuler. It's his go-to guy. It's, it's, his, it's his safety blanket. And, you know, they tried to take that big strike there on the first play of the game, a misfire, and now coming back on the second play thrown over the middle of the defense. We had four underneath droppers and then three deep. It was a really, really good scheme there. A good game of chess, dropping guys back into coverage, knowing that they were going to go through the air again. Boy, what a turn of events, folks. What a turn of events to start this thing. So Western Kentucky, I think they can put their early foot on the throat. A lot of time scrambling into the end zone and a touchdown. 17 yards from out of the backfield, Leon Allen. Wow. They have some serious momentum going now. So this is Leon Allen coming out of the backfield 
on this play. He's just simply on a drag route. He sees his quarterback's in trouble, so he does what you're taught to do. Get up the field, get vertical. He does. Doubt he puts it right where it needs to be as Jermaine Holmes comes up short. Looks like he mistimed the ball there a bit. Lost sight of his man in Leon Allen. Huge Schwedman momentum for good. Western Kentucky earlier in this game. Schwetman with the extra point. Brandon Dowdy knows, look, Allen can protect me in the backfield, but this young man now has 42 catches on the year. Number 42, ooh, a big one. What a series of drives here for this Western Kentucky team. First, it was defense. Brandon Leston back, reading the eyes of Rakeem Cato. Steps in front of the receiver to make an outstanding interception. Ball deep in Marshall's territory. Dowdy drops back. He has his running back, Leon Allen, in the flat, who then turned it up, went vertical, and goes up to make an outstanding reception there for a touchdown. They need to slow this roll, does the herd. The defense now has to be thinking turnover, get some momentum back. Fair catch was called, and the thundering herd will take over with some decent field position after a short pooch kick. Just one play, 17 yards, that's all it took. Dowdy has been really accurate to start things. Now we'll see how Cato can handle things. He got in trouble last week in Birmingham, Alabama, as they squeaked a victory out over UAB, throwing across his body. Maybe again an ill-advised throw in that first possession. Maybe just maybe pressing a little bit here on senior day, defending that undefeated record. Yeah, I think Rakeem Cato and his team, they know a lot of eyes are on this team to see are they the deserving team to make it to one of the New Year's Six. Just a short strike just across the line of scrimmage Deontay McManus a gain of a pair Dejon Brown with the stop and the stick this is a team though that off the field these young men many of them Doc Holliday shared it with us yesterday and the day before have lived through life's adversities this is a team that has come back on the football field from adversity so really nothing you could see on the top side an early jump from a pair of wide receivers flag on the play yeah it looked like the receivers got off to an early start there before the ball was snapped get a lot of emotions we talked about Foster, Foster, offense, offense number 16, number 16 five, yard five yard penalty still second down showed you there early in the open the fight that happened before the game a lot of emotions out there Marshall really needs to calm down and execute don't try to overextend and do too much just make smart efficient and effective plays here to get some momentum going. Five wide outs, second down and 13. Cato at the last minute decides to unload it. Deontay Allen on down the field. And a gain of 23 for the Thundering Herd. There's some movement from the green. Cato drops back, and you see Leston there in the middle of the field. Reading his eyes, takes away the first threat. And then a good job of Rakeem Cato. This is what he does best. Adapt, improvise, adjust, keep the eyes downfield, find the open man. Big play there. Now in the 45-yard line, making some way. Cato can run the football. That's why that was a, certainly a threat. And he's an option with some time rolling out, throw a little bit low. Pass was intended for Deontay McManus, just a freshman out of Baltimore. Western Kentucky doing a great job dropping back underneath some crossing routes early. Frustrating Cato, you can see it. These teams both start extremely fast. As you can see, Western Kentucky has set a school record for the, how quickly they've started out. We'll see if they can sustain because in the second half, it's been an issue. Trips on the top side, a pair on the bottom. Again, five wide receivers. Throw launched high. Great play by another freshman, Hyland Foster. A pickup of 16. Great job of layers route here. You have three wide receivers, and the first one went deep. The second one runs a seven route, and he found that it's called the honey hole, right between the rolled up corner and the safety over the top. Excellent placement by Kato. Cross miss field, quick strike, and that time he finds Fronapple, his other favorite target, a senior, and a gain of seven, a heck of a tight end. He really is a big guy, six foot seven, big catching radius, and now you can see Marshall starting to calm down a bit. You can see that they're just starting to really settle in, making the smart, efficient throws, doing the little things right, going to empty set here again. They like the mismatches they get. One second and three, Bobble. 
And an incomplete pass. Devontae Allen again. Prince Charles Iwara is here to knock it loose. One of my favorite names. There's many favorite names, but Prince Charles Iwara with the hard hit. Yeah, Devontae Allen wasn't able to bring that in. Prince Charles, as you mentioned, this is a guy who's probably the best corner guy. He's going to have his hands full with these curved receivers today. They can really fly. The Hilltoppers press up defensively. And again, an empty set in the backfield. Trips topside. A pair of wide receivers on the near side. There's that favorite target. Close to a first down, a gain of six. Tommy Schuler, they played high school football together as well. He finds his good friend. Surprising a bit that Marshall's going so spread out early. They have that Devin Johnson, the running back we talked about, but they must like what they see, being able to put more of their athletes out on the field, spread this team out. It was a quick hit there to keep this drive alive. Seven pass plays already. Best buddies get together one more time. A gain of 26 into the end zone. A pair of Miami Central High School alum for a touchdown. This, that was the answer that this herd team needed. They got off to an extremely slow start. You had the touchdown early, then the interception that resulted in another quick touchdown for Western Kentucky. They came out a methodical drive. Very unconventional, uncharacteristic drive of that offense as well. A lot of empty, five wides. We'll see if they come back with something different next time. In the air, on the attack, defending their home turf. Good friends think a lot. Again, we talked about the adversity with this team. Boy, they answered with the football adversity, didn't they? Oh, wait, what a way to come back. Put the ball in the hands of Rakeem Cato. You got Tommy Schuler in the slot against Chill Williams, a linebacker. It was no matchup, really. But the thing that impressed me and stood out was not a, a running back was used on that eight play 75 yard drive. They went wide all across the board. They put the ball right back into Cato's hands, trusting him after that interception early, letting him get his confidence back up, going to his go to man, Tommy Schuler, for the touchdown. So Redvick shoots it out of the end zone with a big kick. All sorts of Colleen Moore for ASU, but still a heck of a battle. Uh, what Rich Rodriguez has done there at Arizona, not having had a quarterback return in any of the seasons he's been there, and he's still putting up the numbers he has. Well, you were talking about quarterbacks. There's quarterbacks all over the field in this one. Down the field it goes. Taewon Taylor all the way to the end zone. Touchdown. You want a quarterback? We've got a pair. 75 yards for the strike. 75 yards, Western touchdown. Marshall is shocked right now. Brandon Doughty coming in, doing what he's been doing all season. This system that Jeff Brom has put in is truly dynamic. He, each season, he goes and he takes the best of the best, what else the best offenses are doing, and he adapts a bit of it and adopts a bit of it and has pieced together really what's becoming a machine here at Western Kentucky, being able to score points. Most points and yards in Western Kentucky history this season. They are on fire right now. Schwebman three for three in extra point attempts. The junior and the Murray Kentucky native. And time to get back to work. One play, 75 yards, all of 11 seconds. This is fast break football. This was just a simple fake the read zone, get Dowdy out of the pocket a bit, change the launch point, and in the man-to-man -man coverage, Marshall has just been getting used and abused by this Western Kentucky offense. You put the ball exactly where it needs to be when you have a wide open receiver. Corey Tyndall there for Marshall beaten on the play. Look at Dowdy there. He knows he's got something now. Keep it going, he says, and they're not going to take the cast off the pill. This team, as you mentioned earlier, has nothing to lose. They're coming in, and they are just bringing the haymakers to this team right now. This is their playoff championship game. Marshall right now up against the ropes. They have a team of leaders there. A lot of veteran leadership, a never say die attitude. They're going to punch back, but they put themselves in a serious deficit here early in this game. Mike Mugler to kick it off, the senior, DeAndre Reeves, Remy Watson, back deep for the thundering herd. 
it's Reeves across the 20 to the 25 to the 30 yard line. Hits a pile and goes down. Henry Reeves with the return for the herd. Return of 22 yards. And now, what does Marshall have to respond with it? It's interesting. When you think about Dowdy and the energy that he brought bouncing around like he was in a nightclub before the game, and you think about the word fun, I know I've said it before, but that word fun was mentioned by every coordinator and was mentioned by their head coach on the telephone at least a dozen times. I think fun, especially when you're down with regard to not a perfect team, I think fun is important and they've shown that. Now they show the run. Their opponent, Devin Johnson. What a story he has been. A pickup of 10. And a Marshall first down. Do we see a little bit more run this time? A little bit of a ground game? I think right now what we're seeing is Bill Leggy's testing this defense out, showing them some different looks to see how they're going to respond. So as the game wears on, he'll know what he wants to come back to to continue to attack. He's got a receiver wide open, sliding with the catch at the 25-yard line, Devontae Allen. Allen picks up 31 with that grab. He beat Marcus Ward. Western Kentucky now knows Devin Johnson's in that backfield. So what do they do? Bring that extra man down into the box. Now that's going to put your defenders in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Rakeem Cato has them right where he wants them now. Now you have that dual threat. You see the big 240-pound back standing right beside him. And he gets the football barreling forward. He's his own offensive line at times, isn't he? A gain of five. He, he really is, but at the same time, he has an outstanding offensive line in front of them. What Alex Mirabel, the offensive line coach, has done with this team, he had some injuries early, had to piece them together and shuffle them around a bit, but they've really gelled. This is the foundation, really, for this offense that is so effective. Second and five, Doc Holliday shared with us last night with his offensive and defensive line with a benchmark changes of this team, tiptoeing along the sideline. Angelo Jean Lewis, he picks up eight. Western Kentucky now just going to a single high safety. The corners are out there one on one, and you see the, the out route there. Look at the ball placement by Cato. Just to the outstretched arms where only his receiver was going to get it. That's the timing. That's the chemistry that this offense has developed so well. Three receivers on the high side. Into the corner, a Marshall touchdown. Out of South Carolina, just the freshman. That time he beat Brandon Leston for 14. They went right back to Leston. They saw that he wasn't in zone that time. They saw he was in man coverage, and they liked that matchup with Hylick Foster, the true freshman out of Gaffney, South Carolina. How about this back and forth action? These two offenses going at it. Devin Johnson stands up and gives a nice block to give some more time to Cato to deliver that perfect strike in the back of the end zone. You're watching Fox Sports 1 College Football presented by K Jewelers. If you're slowing down from all the turkey yesterday, these boys are here to wake you up. Dowdy is on fire. Came out early, slinging to his big tight end, Tyler Higby. Then he rolls out, finds his running back, Leon Allen, for the next touchdown. And how about the big strike to Taewon Taylor, who had his man beat in coverage. Dowdy, three touchdown passes already. He has now become Western Kentucky's all-time leader in touchdown passes. How many is he going to throw today? Uh, they're just starting. We played about eight minutes. 35 points have already been scored. You were talking about Dowdy. He's six of seven for 139 yards. And right out of the gates, there's some energy on both of these sides. Highland Towner is deep. He'll watch it sail over his head against the athletic building. It's back to work, Western Kentucky on first and ten. Now, these two quarterbacks may stand on the fringes with regard to the national picture, but within their conference, they stand front and center with regard to who they are, and they've backed it up. They really are, and they're, they're putting on a show today for us, and really, it is a treat to watch right now. These guys both have developed in within this system so well. They run it so efficiently and effectively. Their receivers stacked. A flea flicker on a pass. Pass is a bit short. The pass is complete. We call his name once again. 
Tyler Higby for a gain of 25 yards. And a beautiful throw there coming out of the backfield. The carry is Font with the throw. The Hilltoppers are going to pull out all the trick plays in this game. Again, nothing to lose. This is their championship game in their minds. You'll see it there. I won't be surprised if we see him go for it on fourth down or fake kicks in this game as well. Bringing out all the stops. This time, it's Allen barreling forward for a game of seven, and he gets across midfield and on down to the 43-yard line. Great job there, Allen, picking his way through. They ran to that wing set, the two tight ends they had over there on the right side of that line. Two tight ends set here as well. In the dot formation is Allen. A couple of weeks ago, Allen rushed for 345 yards against Army. And he's at it again across the 40 to the 37-yard line. A gain of six and a first down. Jermaine Holmes with the stick. Allen there picking his way through. Really has some great running lanes. That offensive line, Lamp, Ray, Stark, Williams, and Clemens up front. Doing a great job opening up some holes for Leon Allen to run through. Flag is down. Uh, an inaccurate pass comes up a little bit short. Intended for Joel German. I think we're going to get a high low block here. Looked like we had an offensive lineman that was engaged with a defensive lineman. And then the lineman beside him came in and tried to chop the legs. There were fouls by both teams on the play. Personal foul, chop block, offense number 51 and number 72. Before the pass was thrown, holding defense number 10, those fouls offset, replay first down. So Corey Tyndall there is out on the corner and gets the defensive hold that negates the penalty that would have put Western Kentucky behind the sticks. Now, here we go back to a first and 10 situation. It's a clean slate for this offense. You see the tight end Higby there split out to the bottom of the screen. The bear in the backfield, first out, including Allen, who makes the catch. Allen with a touchdown catch earlier in this contest, a gain of seven. This is where Leon Allen really shines. I mean, we talk about how effective he is on the ground, but really he's the team's third leading receiver. The guy averages about nine yards per catch. Tyndall put some pressure on the quarterback as well on that one. And that's why the option was the safe option, and Allen out front. And as his bodyguard in the backfield. Beautiful grab, quick turn back with that one. Danger field, Jarrett. With a gain of five. Marshall was showing a cover two look there early, had the corner up. Looked like maybe he was going to be squatted out there on the corner, but then at the last second, he dropped back and went into a man coverage. Dowdy spotted it and hit Dangerfield for the quick strike. Another Western Kentucky first down, trying to move it inside of the red zone. the catch over the shoulder. Willie McNeil turned one way, then the other through his hands. Corey Tyndall was with him, stride for stride. Well, McNeil, he's the go-to guy in the slot there for Dowdy, and he was one-on-one -on -one with Tyndall. You see Dowdy looking the safety off, comes back, knows he has his one-on-one -on -one mismatch based on that single high safety. He saw a double move there by McNeil. Almost resulted in another disaster for the herd. Dowdy knows he had one. He's frustrated. Here we are, second and ten. Not an ideal situation for this offense. Defense presses up on the wide receivers. And because of that, you have a shorter game. The tight end, Tyler Higby, Daryl Roberts with the tackle. Well, there was busted coverage on that play. The doubt he missed. He was looking to get the ball out quickly there when really he had a runner down the seam. A lot of work in the air, just enough on the ground the 20 yard line it is third and five plenty of time diving with the touchdown grab tight end Tyler Higby a gain of 20 into the end zone 
Wow. What else can you say? Tyler Higby <laughs> is stepping up for Dowdy right now, the converted wide receiver. He's a big guy, an athletic guy who's shown up twice early big. He's 6'5", 253 pounds, a junior out of Clearwater, Florida. Been the recipient of two touchdown grabs already in the first quarter. A two touchdown lead. Dowdy helped make that happen, didn't he? He sure did. He had some pressure up the middle. And he showed that poise and confidence. Buy himself some more time. You'll see the pressure coming. He feels it, steps up, and Higby staying alive. It was not. Dowdy's first read. He wanted one of the shallow crossers. They hit his two shallow crossers, but it was a great job by Marshall taking that away. It's the tendency that Western Kentucky had shown on tape. They took it away. Higby came back from the opposite side of the field to beat his man in coverage and make an outstanding catch. Look at Dowdy. They're really feeling it today, Set. Folks, he is 10 of 12. Four touchdown passes, 176 yards. Now, now remember for Higby, if you're just joining us, he was on the sidelines to start this thing. Further down on the depth chart is the backup tight end. Mitchell Henry went down with what looked like a forearm injury. And Higby has just been incredible out there with a handful of huge grabs. Yeah, and they're using them really effectively and efficiently. They're not asking them to block too much in the run game. They're putting them, they're spreading them out, putting them two, three yards detached from his offensive tackle. Even spread out wide as a wide out at times. That's a mis mismatch there, 6'5", 250 pounds. He's been taking advantage of it today. So Marshall has not come close to this total. They've already allowed the most points in a game that they have allowed, and another gamble here on a short pooch kick. Out to the 35-yard line on a small return. Rashad Myers was there. Just a quick return of six. Pass, pass, pass. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm anxious to see how many points we have here by the end of this game because these two offenses, number one and number two, in scoring in Conference USA, two of the most productive offenses in the nation. There you go. Yeah. It's been a treat today. There's 4.05 to go here in the first quarter. 42 points have been scored. Defensive coordinators look away if you're watching at home. Play action pass and a high grab there. Yields a flag, so Cato deems it a free play. There was some big time quarterback pressure from Gavin Rocker after the pressure he picked up 10, but we'll see what the flag is. I wonder if he grazed his face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Defense number 88. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first half. Yeah, it looked like Gavin there got a bit of the face mask as he, Cato, was going to hit his tight end, but had to pull it down. That made Rocker leave his feet. Kind of got out of it in an awkward situation. He's trying to grab something to get Cato on the ground and just barely nicked the bottom of the face mask, it looked like. So Marshall moves to football with the flag, and they might have jumped. This is something they really battled last week. They were off step the entire day in Birmingham and a barely went over UAB. Offense, number 83, five-yard penalty, still first down. The tight end, Fronample jumping. Again, they, they can't do it as much as they did last week, for sure. So they get the gift, then they give five back. First and 15 from the 44. Knee-high snap. Out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Devontae Allen is hammered hard to the ground after a gain of eight. Prince Charles delivered. Prince Charles in war with a lift. Yeah, Prince Charles is in man-to-man -man coverage there and gives a nice shove there. And that's the type of intensity that we knew we were going to get from this team. They were doing that before kickoff even happened. Yes, they that were. scuffle. They came out to play. Let them know they're going to be in for a fight. Ball on the ground. And it's recovered by Devin Johnson. Loss of three. Johnson lost it and scrambled to get it. Never had the ball. You can see there, uh, Cato, the, the, the center quarterback exchange, just bobbled it a bit and never had it secure. So Devin Johnson there 
was able to hop on that one and prevent disaster here for Marshall. Now it's third and 11. Looks like Western Kentucky's gonna go into a bit of a press man. See if Cato can find the win. He's got time to throw. He's got a man. He's got the hands into the end zone. Touchdown. Devontae Allen for 40. Justin Haig for another extra point. Yeah. Place kickers are earning their scholarships today as well. <laughs> this is good fun. Back and forth, these two quarterbacks, boy, they really throw it around the yard. And you can see the single high safety in the middle of the field. Cato recognizes it, knows he has his man out one on one. De Devontae Allen had beaten Wonderful Terry in coverage. Not so wonderful on that play as Allen beats him. Mano Imano and Cato. Hits him with a strike. His running back, Johnson, Man, says Cato, he's an amazing leader. And he says he lets you know what he sees all the time. So in other words, Cato lets all of his players around know what he sees. He does have great vision, doesn't he? He does. Great vision and, and that football IQ we talked about. This is a guy who's played a lot of ball for the Thundering Herd, and he's you know, four-year starter for this team. He's a coach on the field. Uh, he, he has the ability in the green light to make changes at the line of scrimmage. Marshall's going to get a good opportunity here to pin their ears back. Western Kentucky stuck on the 10-yard line now after that muffed kick by Kylan Towner. Towner looked like it had it go off his shins. Western Kentucky kind of looks at this as their playoff run. Almost March Madness in the fall, if you will, to compare. They act like if we lose, we're out, okay? And if we win, we get to move on. That's the, that's the mantra. Uh, and, it, and it's worked. The offense has continued to produce, and the defense has stepped up as well, playing their best ball in the past three games statistically-wise. This Hilltop team here, they want that seventh win and hope it secures them a bull berth. We start back inside of the 10-yard line. Allen with the surge to the 16 with a gain of six. Taj Letman, the junior, stopped him at that six-yard point. You look at what Western Kentucky has done this year. They've scored a bunch, 461, but they've given up a bunch, 405. That's their total score on the season. Marshall doesn't usually find themselves not only trailing, but giving up this many points. Aaron Taylor was in motion out of the backfield, leaping and gaps of about five more yards, pick up a 15, Leon Allen, a low hurdle there. Oh, this was a great play design, get everyone flowing to the left and then run the slip screen back to Leon Allen who hurdles his man. Now check out number 67 there at the end of the play, big Derek Stark throwing the forearm in there. These guys are playing physical. And really, this is an offense that gives you the best of both worlds when you have those tough Lineman there leading the way for a big back, but then you have that offensive scheme that spreads you out and throws it all over the field. It's really fun to watch and tough to stop if you're a defender. And the play action, the fake to Allen. Lobbed up high and again with his hands on display. Taewon Taylor, the Louisville born sophomore. Gain of 24. Western Kentucky was in a bunch set to the left side of the formation. And each of the receivers went deep. And it was really just a mistimed jump by Corey Tyndall there. He was in decent position early in the down. He was unable to find that ball. Great play by Western Kentucky. With no game. James Rouse. They love big number 11, don't they, in Rouse? Yeah, I mean, Rouse is a guy who he gets double teamed, if not triple teamed, for most of the game. I mean, when they're able, they will address this guy who's a serious issue in the trenches. 
really the heartbeat there of that defensive front for Marshall. Another team MVP a season ago, a red shirt senior. Rouse there's some pressure coming in hard, but he does get rid of it. There was pressure on the backside as well. Roberts was with Dangerfield, but some serious heat provided by Tyndall. Oh, yeah, Corey Tyndall, he came flying out of the secondary position there. And look at the hit that Dowdy takes. He knew he was going to take it, tried to hang in there, and put it out there for his receiver to make a play. But now in a third and ten situation, he's going to have to find a way to step up. Marshall looks like they're going to go with a too high safety look initially. We'll see if they bring some pressure. Perfect three of three on third down. This one deeper, though. There is the pressure, and down he goes. Arnold Blackman with the sack. Loss of four. Defensive coordinator, Coach Heater. What a scheme this was, guys. There were two pass rushers on that play. Two guys rushing the passer. Nowhere for Dowdy to go. Big win there for the defensive front from the herd. Big win, who will win? This has been wild and crazy. Western Kentucky 28, Marshall 21. Fox Sports 1 College Football presented by Cage. Yeah, back and forth these guys have gone, and I, I can't say we didn't expect it. These are two dynamic offenses. The one surprise, though, is Marshall's defense has been solid this year, but they're getting exposed here today by Brandon Dowdy in Western Kentucky. Joseph Acapente is the kicker. Here's a look at today's statistics to this point, brought to you by Ford, built for tough. Yeah, and really, one thing that jumps out at you there, look at these pass yards. <laughs> I mean, just so early in the game, and we're already seeing these kind of numbers. Both quarterbacks going at it. Dowdy's been spectacular, and Cato's been 11 for 15, 181 yards already in this game with three touchdowns. He had one misfire of the interception, but since then has been brilliant. Marshall's going back to that five wide receiver. No running back look that found them success in that first touchdown. The backfield, as you mentioned. Like he was certainly down. Ryan Yurichek, the future and tight end, grabs four on that one. And an incomplete pass, no catch there. So we've only seen Johnson carry the ball two times, Coy. Right, which is which is surprising. That's a guy who gets the ball about 20 to 25 times a game. But Marshall is looking at this defense, seeing that they can get a mismatch somewhere across the board, and they're trusting their leader, Cato, to find that mismatch. Cato find this time. Yurichek again. And that's a gain of six. So he goes right back to Yurichek, who Pulls this one in. How much of the offense is orchestrated once it's sent down from on high by Cato? Does he change things a bit? Well, he, he does change it quite often, and sometimes <laughs> Bill Lloyd, the offensive coordinator, said he gets a bit nervous because it'll be third and eight, and he'll check to a run. But he said he's right about 90% of the time. He's got trust in his star quarterback. So as running back, Devin Johnson watching from the sidelines as that one is picked off. Brandon Leston has done it again, his second interception. Western Kentucky had a rusher off the edge. Cato threw the ball, but it looked like Heilig Foster just kind of stopped on the route. Or what Cato was out of tune with where his receiver is going to be. You can see the rusher coming off the edge there. Lester, or excuse me, Heilig Foster stops instead of continuing to run on that in route. And again, second interception of the game here. This is serious momentum taken back for the Hilltoppers now on the 31-yard line of the herd. Dowdy going under center. Look for them to maybe try to fake a run and take a quick strike. That's exactly what he did. Instead, it's a strike to the top side. It's hauled in by Willie McNeil, who streaks along for Tenbury close to the first down. Well, Dowdy there, they, they did fake the run, and they wanted to try to catch Marshall deep. But it was good coverage by the secondary. Dowdy, smart player, sends it to his outlet pass for the easy throw. No game like this game right now. As far as these offenses running so efficiently, it's something special to watch. 
West to Kentucky in the meantime is utilizing the run quite a bit. Leon Allen another first down as he grabs 11. Allen at 45 yards rushing for this point. We talk about Hickey, the guy who has a couple touchdown passes in this game. He came around and laid the block that set Allen free to get around the corner for the big gain on first down. Allen a junior from Natchee High School in Bradenton, Florida. Doesn't do a 100-yard game. He's done that six times in his career. Ranger revs up again. Reaching high and incomplete pass. That would have been incredible by Nicholas Norris, but Leggett just kind of knocked it loose from him. Downey there tried to hit Norris on the quick spot route. He had a tight end going deep behind him, had a, someone out in the flat. His receiver sat it down. Good defensive play there for Marshall. Now looking at second and ten here. Second and goal from the ten. Standing right on that 10-yard line, as Coy mentioned, second and goal. Allen's got some space to work with. He cuts back, fights his way. Did he get into that end zone? We wait, we wait. He did. And even 10 as he got across that line, and he had some help there. Manley and Stark went with him, a couple of bodyguards. But again, the ground game has been utilized by Western Kentucky. Yeah, they're really putting the herd in a pickle right now as far as establishing the ground game on top of that effective pass. Herd's really up against the ropes. Schwetman, five of five now in his extra point attempts. Again, a turnover started this thing though. I mean, getting the ball in the way of Western Kentucky. And they grabbed it. Then again, they turned to the ground game to get things going. So for Western Kentucky, a shocking 14-point lead here in Huntington, West Virginia. On his way to yet another 100-yard game, 55 yards on 10 carries. Big question, was this a touchdown? Yeah, this camera angle doesn't really show, but look back and looked at it. The knee's down, and you're going to get a better look here. As you can see, Leon Allen, knee down there. Ball did not cross the plane. So in this game where every touchdown is vital because of the effectiveness of these offenses, the Hilltoppers got away with one there. As now we sit at 35-21, Western Kentucky. I heard, and they look back at that. They're not going to be happy with that. Every touchdown matters, especially when eight have been scored already. <laughs> this is outstanding. I mean, it, it, talk about spread them out, score some points. We might be setting a record here today, Seth. Well, Western Kentucky has taken advantage of a couple of big interceptions for sure. That's the difference in this game to this point. DeAndre Reeves is deep. Mike Mugler will kick it off, and you never know what the Hilltoppers will have up their sleeve. A devil may care attitude in this game so far. Let's see. It's not the line drive kick. Roll on out the back. Uncharacteristic here. Marshall and Rakeem Cato with the interceptions in this game. Two interceptions that have led to touchdowns and 14 points for Western Kentucky. Doc Holliday's squad, 35 points allowed today. That defense usually stout. They're struggling with this offense that has put up points all season, set records at Western Kentucky for points and yards. We'll see if Cato can match. Devin Johnson serves as a blocking back, does not carry. Cato looking to match. Handed grab and an interception. Number three, the hat trick for Brandon Leston. Cato never saw him. Cato ne never saw Leston, who made an outstanding catch on this play. This kid is having a game of a lifetime. You see Cato looking off. Look at Weston in the middle of the field. He started on the right hash as you look at it, and then just gets a jump. Look at the vertical to get up. His hips are almost up at the head of the wide receiver. Reaches up for the one-handed grab. That's going to be the one later tonight on Fox Sports Live. 
Good call by you. It was intended for Angelo Jean Lewis. So here we go with the 14 point lead at the 36 yard line. 37. On first and 10. The third interception throw of the day. Joel German with the play there for seven. Wesson Marshall brought the heat on that play. You can see the big lineman there getting the pep talk from their leader, Coach Alex Mirabel. He's, he's the guy who's gotten this offensive line to perform so well today. Hanson and Selby and Van Horn all gathered together with their leader. Down low, Corey Tindall got German again. Corey Tindall a great job coming up out of his rover position there. Spotted Dowdy's intentions and flew up to make the big hit. Now we're looking at a third and two. There have been two third and one conversions in this game by Western Kentucky when they chose to run it. They may think that they may try to go for a quick pass on this play. But we'll see. We see Mitchell Henry come back into the game. Injured himself in the first play of the game. And he's moving to the center of the football field between the hash marks instead. Along the far sideline, it's Jared Dangerfield for a big first down and a gain of 10. They set this play up to look as if it was going to be a pass. Three tight ends, a run, excuse me, three tight ends, fake to Leon Allen. Look at Dowdy, initial read covered, comes back to his outlet on the outside. It was Dangerfield. Sees that the play has broken down, comes back to the ball, makes a great play, and keeps the drive alive. Dangerfield, three catches, 22 yards. Dowdy, 16 of 20 now. Over 230 yards. Down the far sideline he goes. And inside of the 10-yard line, Leon Allen again, a gain of 35. Leon Allen is taking advantage of some undisciplined football right now. We had an edge defender that'll be to the left side of your screen that comes inside of Daryl Williams, who is pulling on the play. He should have stayed outside, forced the ball back inside. He does not. Ends up in a big explosive run for Leon Allen, who's having him a day here for the Hilltoppers as well. 91 yards on the ground for Allen. First and 10, first and goal, and a first strike in and out of the hands of Willie McNeil. They like those perimeter screens, the quick perimeter screens to their wide receivers to try to force a defender to make a one-on-one -on -one tackle. And they build off of that, too, as the game goes on, Seth. They're going to fake that perimeter screen and then send the guy who was meant to block down the field. We'll see if they come back to that later in the game. Allen and his successes have given Western Kentucky options. Same can't be said for Marshall. New star back, Devin Johnson. Allen blocking now across into the end zone for a touchdown. And he had that one rattle loose. Joel Germont. And a gain of nine into pay dirt. More points on the board. German came across the formation on a motion route. Then he came, hit vertical, made it look as if he was going to go vertical, sat it down, snapped his head around to Dowdy, who spotted his receiver for the touchdown. Unbelievable contest. They're doubling them up on the road. 42-21, a high-powered Conference USA shootout. Devil May Care, Western Kentucky. Hey, we're not even through this first half of action. Yeah, outstanding day. As you take a look at Dowdy's numbers there, 17 for 22 on the day, though. This guy, 243 yards. He has now set a tide a school record five touchdowns were in the first half. I mean, this, this this performance is outstanding even more so because of the defense against which he's doing it. Marshall's defense at the top of the league in most categories defensively. I doubt he's just picking Doc Holliday's team apart right now. 
DeAndre Reeves is deep. Mike Mugler will kick it this time. And again, we've seen a different look and a different kick just about every time. Willie McNeil on special teams races up and down. Let everyone know what exactly they have up their sleeves this time. Short kick. Racing up to grab it. Hard hit. A really firm stick. That's about as big as a hit you will see in this sport. Look at that. I mean, you're taking a, a guy and turning him completely around a 360 in the air after that hit. Daryl Young, special teamer, delivered that blow. Remy Watson received that blow. Number two running back. Heck, the number one running back hasn't worked a lot in this contest. Raheem Cato out of the shotgun. There's the number one running back, and that's why he earned that scholarship. A first down with a gain of 13. Now it's time for a Lowe's. Never stop improving game break. Here's Cole Wright. Didn't really see how it happened. You can see him taking three defenders to bring the big man down. He had a big hit from his left side, be from our right side of the screen there. And maybe that shoulder area, that hit from Wonderful Terry may be the cause of this injury. You can see him there trying to loosen it up a bit. But a big collision, two big collisions in a row from the Hilltoppers first on the kickoff. And now here from a defensive back on the first play of the drive of Marshall. Temperature about freeze, and you see folks bundled up. I don't think we saw any, you know, a shot, a shot to the head. It looked like it was all shoulder. It got hit there from Wonderful Terry, and then he landed on that shoulder as well. The big man's sitting up now. You can hear the crowd cheer, and he's really been the heartbeat of this offense. I mean, the, what he has done for this offense to open up the pass game even more. He's a beloved player on this team. Came in, they put him at linebacker. He looked a bit unnatural at the position. So what they do the next year, they put him at tight end, a bit of an H back. Had success, was effective for him a season ago. This year, going into the season, he was gonna be their starting tight end. They had some injuries and they said, who can we put at the running back position to fill in for these injuries. He's come in at 1,500 yards later and 8.5 yards of carry on the season. He's become one of the best backs in the entire nation. So now Stuart Butler will carry the torch momentarily in the backfield. But we have four right receivers spread out across the middle to Heilig Foster moves it forward. 16 across midfield. 39-yard line. Tough this is preached if you play for Marshall. And there's no doubting that he'll be back out there. As long as they can keep it in one piece, that shoulder took a hard hit. There's a look. That came on. There is a hard lick delivered, but Stuart Butler. Welcome to the contest. Meet Brandon Leston, a gain of 13. Well, this all started up front. Big Sebastian Johansson and Cody Collins in there. Big blocks opening up a gaping hole. How about Lesson coming up again for the big hit? This guy's been all over the field today, grabbing interceptions and now laying the lumber, setting the tone and the tempo on that hit. Swedish born Johansson with that big block. He and his line again try to move the line. Gavin Rocker was there with the stick, gain of just two. They respect Rocker. They were talking about him last night and his ability to hit and hit hard. Yeah, he's a force coming off the edge. Leader in the trenches. He's the only senior captain here. He had a strip force fumble last week. Tato now in a second and eight. Seeing man coverage. Most of this drive from the Hilltoppers. Tato with some time. They have to take it on the run. Cuts back. He's got a first down. And into the red zone to the 14-yard line. A gain of 10. Decision-making late. Well, this is what one of the things that makes Rakeem Cato so special. He does not force the throw into coverage, but how about that? Making Nick Holt the linebacker, the team's leading tackler. 
like he's posing for a Kodak moment. Mm -hmm. King Cato takes it by a first down here for his team. He's got one-on-one -on -one situations to his right. Pressure from behind, the throw off the mark. Craig Wilkins, it was intended for Craig. Derek Overstreet there, came off the edge and got pressure to the backside. King Cato gets hit as he's thrown. Western Kentucky Hilltopper front there, really turning it up on this drive. Big minutes for a freshman in Overstreet, out of Paducah, Kentucky. The backup running back with starting style. A uh, gain of 12, Marcus Ward with the hit, but first, Stuart Butler keeps moving the chains. Stuart Butler did an outstanding job. First, seeing this hole, hitting it, and then making one, two, three guys bring him down on his way to the two-yard line here. Marshall not backing down, not content. They're still in this fight. Butler delivers a few blocks. Across, throwing across his body, but very accurate. Fron Apple is the target. A touchdown on a two-yard strike. Great play design there by offensive coordinator Bill Legg. Fron Apple was in a tight end blocking position. Made it look like he was pass blocking. Then released late. Taylor found for the easy touchdown. You are watching Fox Sports 1 College Football presented by K. Jewelers. Fast break football. Both of these teams lighting up the scoreboard. Tons of time left. Leader, too, on the sideline and in the field of play. He sure is. He did a good job of selling the fake run on that play. He showed as if he was going to block and six foot seven, 235, found a way to slip back underneath the linebackers. Cato found him. Great play design by offensive coordinator Bill Legg. Working on that shoulder of Devin Johnson. They've got to find a way to get him back out there. Though, to be fair, Stuart Butler just said, I've got this. His offensive line took care of him, and Butler had a had a nice part of that whole offensive attack. Butler, three carries and 27 yards right away. Yeah, remember that offensive line got the pep talk from their, their coach, Alex Mirabel, there a couple of drives ago, and they put on a show that last drive. Island Towner grabs it at the nine-yard line. He's now across the 20 to the 24. Let's go back and take a look at that touchdown. It was really a good job. Stuart Butler going to fake the run. King Cato fakes the handoff, but you're going to get the block and then release by Fronapple. Watch the sell job by Fronapple there on the left. Block engages. The linebackers have no clue. By the time they recognize what's happening, no chance. Again, great play design by Bill Legg and a sell job by both Butler and Cato on that play. And then connected on the strike to Frone Apple. What a game this has been offensively. Both are just performing at their best right now in this blow for blow battle. Frone Apple's fourth touchdown reception of the year and stick from the backfield. By Juan Lang delivered it. Taewon Taylor was the recipient. You can hear the crowd starting to get into it. You see the resiliency of this bunch. These players, they're down a couple of scores, but they're welcoming the fight. By the way, this team's undefeated for a reason. Very good. Taekwon is 5'7". Small man, big hit. Pressure. He did get rid of it. As if it was picked off. Some big pressure coming in as well. Absolutely. Big pressure indeed. Six foot five, 250 pounds. Rashad Myers was the guy that forced the pressure. There was a pocket initially, but then Dowdy has to feels he has to avoid the pocket. There's the pressure you see. A poor decision on his part. Trying to make a play, trying to force it when you're in a situation where you don't have to. You're ahead in this game. You've controlled the tempo offensively. No reason for Dowdy to make that pass. You can see that's his first turnover in the last four games. He's been incredibly efficient. Leggett's fourth career 
Interception. Make that his eighth, his fourth on the season. Butler's still back in there running back. Across the 40. To the 30. Down to the 20. Butler! Touchdown, Marshall! 48 yards. So you can feel the energy starting to build here in the stadium. This was an outstanding run by Butler, giving this team a spark, an additional spark after that interception. Two back-to-back -back plays you get the hurt. Feeling it now here. It all starts with the turnover on this. The herd, here they come. The thunder is rolling. The interception, then the touchdown by Butler with a quick strike. We got a ball game. But you wouldn't know it with the energy. Again, this is a local favorite stop. Seats filling up the day after Thanksgiving, maybe a little bit of quick morning shopping, and they shopped around for a backup running back. They found one. A great run. We still wait on Devin Johnson, the star back. Stuart Butler had some huge holes opened up, I know, that you will explain to us by the, the steak eaters up front. And again, it all starts with that offensive line. Island Towner is deep for Western Kentucky. Bedford drives him back to the two. Across the 10, across the 20, knocked down at the 22-yard line, a gain of 22. We got to watch this play again. How about Cody Collins filling in in this game for the injured Michael Selby on the fold block helps seal that opening. And how about this? Making Leston look like Bambi on ice. How about that? Stuart Butler, touchdown run to give this team the spark. Now 42-35. Here comes the hurt. I want to take my kids to see that show. Bambi on ice. <laughs> Maybe you know people in the industry that could get me a ticket. You know, this this game has been outstanding. Some in individual players just stepping up in crucial moments for each team as they go back and forth delivering shots at one another. The crowd's getting loud now. You can see Dowdy has to run up to give his lineman the play call. Start things in the shotgun from the 23-yard line. Leon Allen from out of the backfield. Barrels his way to a Western Kentucky first down. Move Taekwon Lang along the way. Gain of 11. Leon Allen fo following his big people movers up front. He had two pullers on that play. Good block by Cam Clemens and also pulled Derek Starr on the play. And then Leon Hall, once he gets moving, that big back lowered the boom at the end of the play. He's over 100 yards, 102 rushing yards for Leon Allen. The junior, 235-pounder, who again rushed for 345 a couple of weeks ago against Arnold. Play clock. Allen stopped that time after moving it for a pair. Raheem Waiters was there. You can see maybe Western Kentucky now, this Marshall defense sensing that they're picking up some momentum after that last series and allowing Dowdy to give a couple quick handoffs to start this drive as opposed to going back in the air. Remember, it was important for this team to give Dowdy confidence early. Well, I wonder if that confidence has been shaken after that interception. There are wide receivers on the bottom. Foul hit delivered. Darryl Roberts after a gain of just one. Nicholas Norris absorbed it. Marshall defense looks like they're starting to figure this offense out a bit. Those crossing routes early were affecting them. How about recognizing it and listening to the hit? Darryl Roberts, the senior, 182 pounds out of Lakeland, Florida. He's been a pleasant surprise this season for being physical in the run, and as you saw, the physicality there, delivering the blow, third and eight now. The Hilltoppers, four of five on third down attempts. Whistle <laughs> stop, action, flags fly. Like the delay game. Offense, five-yard penalty, go for that. 
notch that one for this crowd because they weren't this loud early on. It's getting loud. Yeah, it really is. And you can see Dowdy having to walk up into the offensive line there as they're in their set position to give them the call. He's trying to make adjustments. It's a check with me offensive scheme that Dowdy has really flourished in. But when this crowd raises the decibels a bit, well, that makes things a bit more difficult, and we're seeing the effects of it now. Again, this crowd more citizens than students. Class not in session. But the workers have showed up and are making some noise. And there's a big stop, Leon Allen, with no game. Corey Tindall with the lift. What a stop there. Great hustle on the play, specifically by James Rouse. He started off on the opposite side of the line in his defensive tackle position. Sniffed that screen out for a big stop here. Akapenti. With the kick fielded at the 27-yard line by the sure-handed Tommy Schuler. Goes down to the 34-yard line. Punt of 44. Some some big licks today. Finally, some defense you can talk about. Yeah, it's been a perfect game for me. You know, big hits. How about this? First pressure in Dowdy. How about the big collisions, the flesh bombs, the knockbacks, and the kill shots? All game. This gets your blood pumping. You're getting the best of both worlds. Explosive offense and smash mouth defense. We're in for a treat today. And a quick reminder, there was a, uh, a pregame brawl between these two teams as well. Yeah, they started this game with intensity, enthusiasm, and it's shown it has not died down one bit. Cato takes over the offense, shy of Schuler. If you're just joining us, this is what got things started. This is about 45 minutes before game time. And we're only showing you one of these skirmishes that happened. It happened before that as well. As you can see, the penalty flags were being thrown before the crowd was even joining the party. Now they're out there. Doc Holliday's squad have really come to life here and answered the call after an early hilltopper array to points. A whole lot there, a gain of two. Derek Overstreet made it difficult. Stuart Butler again working for Devin Johnson in the backfield. He's really stepped up. Receivers on the high side. He's got one on one down here. We'll see where Cato chooses to go with this. Crucial third and eight. Changes the play out of the shotgun. Now goes to work. And there is pressure, and down he goes. A loss of six. There's Gavin Rocker. Gavin Rocker sacks Cato. Walk back to the 30. Fourth down, Marshall. Rocker, big. Way to step up. This guy has delivered when crunch time. Look at him milling around here in the middle of your screen, not getting set. That's planned confusion for the quarterback. Rocker on a delayed blitz from that stand-up position was able to find a crease and get the pressure on Cato, forcing this punt here late in the first half. Tyler Towner is deep. Tyler Williams got a beautiful punt in Birmingham last week. Flag down. It looked like they bumped Towner on a 41 yards. Got to give him a yard, and he didn't. In fact, he looked as if he made contact. That was Rodney Allen, the freshman from Dallas, Texas. Kick catch interference. Kicking team number 34. 15-yard penalty. First down. Yes, yeah, a, a mistake by a young guy there. He's going to be on the right side of our screen there. And you can see the fair catch clearly made. No reason to be anywhere near him. No reason for that. He's going to hear that from, from the, some of the veterans. You can see them over there talking to him now. This is not the time to be making selfish mistakes. No time to get cute. You see that fair catch signal, just get away. Big mistake there to get some free chunk of yardage for this Hilltopper offense. It's been taking it easily on their own. So it moves them nearly to midfield. They'll start it at the 44-yard line. 
across the 50, down to the 40. Allen moves it out of bounds at about the 32-yard line, rumbling forward 25 yards. The left guard the center, Derek Stark and Brandon Ray, look at them there. They're coming off to the right side of your screen, pulling the success that this Hilltopper offense has had has been with the pulling lineman, an athletic bunch who's really getting the job done today to establish this ground game that the Herd has not yet had an answer for. Crazy offense in this contest. He's got his tight end. And he's got him down inside of the 10-yard line. Tim Gorski weighs in. We have not called his name a bunch. Gain of 25 again. How about a little copycat? They saw it work for Marshall early in the game. This is the same play that Fronapple scored on. The tight end, delayed block, comes off late. Backers lose him because they think that he's protecting the quarterback. Next thing you know, he's off down the field making a catch for a big game for this Hilltopper offense. Western Kentucky, 415 total yards. Marshall, 315. Marshall calls a timeout. 730 yards in this game. Let's check in with Rob Stone. Rob, what's coming up at halftime? Hundley looks as healthy as he has all season here in the past several games running the ball a lot more effectively than he was earlier in the season really has made a great push here for the Bruins at the right time of the season first and goal on the seven yard line both of these teams nearly 10 yards per play Seven should be nothing. Dowdy out of the backfield. Shakes a tackle into the end zone. My goodness, Tyler Higby, you can't bring him down. What a game that young man is having. We had a missed tackle on the play. I tried Quan Lang, but another designed play to get their tight ends involved in this action. What a huge day, though, for the tight end Higby. Record-setting touchdown strike for Dowdy. Six. Most ever in a game. We're not even at halftime yet. Three touchdown receptions by Higby. Three. And again, if you're just joining us, Higby on the depth chart was supposed to just help out. When Henry went out, he took over. Well, you see there, Higby, he was starting on the left side of the formation and did what was called a submarine boot. Look at the missed tackle there by Lang on the play. This is all effort by Higby after getting open off a good play design there. Hilltoppers going blow for blow with the herd. I mean, this has been back and forth. I feel like we're watching a tennis match. Both of these offenses screaming up and down the field. Back and forth they go. It's going to be who's indoors to the end. Obviously, in this one, I mean, it's, 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 this has been fun to watch. That. Chuck Holt is the defensive coordinator for Marshall. Nick Holt, the defensive coordinator for Western Kentucky. That's where you played. What do those two talk about at halftime? Oh, I, where do you start? Where do you start? I mean, the, first of all, Western Kentucky, the, the issue that you see Higby there has had success through the air with his three touchdowns, but they also, other than the air, the, the ground game, Leon Allen has just been unstoppable thus far. The offensive line for Western Kentucky has done an outstanding job all game, so it, it's got to start up front. The trenches for the herd, they have to make a stand. They have to make this team one-dimensional. When, when, you're, when you're up against the ropes and you, you can't stop the run or the pass, there's nowhere to start. So I think we'll see that they're going to try to take away that run game and make this team one dimensional. That's something certainly to look forward to in the second half. Not only what could be, you know, 100 more points. You never know if that might happen. But how these defenses respond. What these coordinators have up their sleeve. Who has maybe a little bit more heart in red or green down there defensively. We've seen some licks, but we haven't seen many stops. Let's be honest. Yeah, the, the team that emotionally sustains in this game, because we talked about how it got started before the game even began with the scuffle early in the game. A lot of energy and emotion. We're seeing some more of a good throw here. And That's the nice return. Reeves. Plenty of time for a strike. Let's get it on out to Cole Wright here as a game break. Gosh, only 14 total points. <laughs> We're getting spoiled here by watching some outstanding offensive play. 
other side of that is obviously defensive have been able to step up. Craig Vito Wilkins. hits Craig Wilkins in front of Brandon Leston for eight. Ardell game summary at this point. And it's all about the offense, truly. I mean, that yards per play is crazy, brought to you by Dell. These are yards you expect to see at the end of a game, let alone at the end of a half. Almost 10 yards per play. There goes Butler again. I mean, he's been outstanding. Once he gets to that second level, he's dangerous. Gain of 16. Leston's back there flinching. He remembers what happened last time he was one-on-one -on -one having to try to tackle Butler. 5'9", 185-pound jitterbug. Nice with the pair of timeouts. Yeah. They, they will not. Devontae Allen, 33 yards, wild and crazy football here in West Virginia. And a flag on the play. And it was post touchdown that flag. Quick explanation. After the touchdown, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number six. That 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. One-on-one -on -one situation against Terry, the defensive back for Western Kentucky. Devontae Allen, great focus as he goes up to reel that one in from Cato. But all game, we've seen wide receivers winning. In one-on-one -on -one situations, defensive back's been unable to answer the call. Doc Halliday's not happy. Let's take a look at this play again. You gotta see it from the end zone camera there. Terry wasn't in awful position, wasn't able to punch the pocket or even get his head around. So Devontae Allen reeled it in from his man. Keem Cato having a day. 49-42 the herd. A minute 24 left the herd gave Western Kentucky. And the way this game's been going, that's plenty of time. Allen with a pair of touchdown receptions coming into this game has two more today. And so again, you mentioned those timeouts. Those are certainly important. 49-42. Yeah, at some point, the defensive backs are going to have to take a stand. Allen Towner deep for Western Kentucky. He stepped out of bounds. That's going to put them there on the 17-yard line. Now that's a long way to go, but still, we talked about his offense is 91 combined <laughs> points in the first half. No surprise that that's the most of the season. But on full display, these offenses have just been unstoppable. I mean, that's not even close. That's 14 points superior to the, the number two tower. 77 before that, 91 points in this one. And let's see. And you mentioned those timeouts. Allen reverses field, slips. At about the 11 yard line, maybe a hold, no gain, a flag flew. Allen reversed his field there. It looks like we had someone come back. Illegal block in the bag. Offense number 51. After the distance to the goal, replay first half. We have a running back that starts freestyling, doing his own thing there. And offensive linemen, they have a target they're not used to hitting, and they're coming back and trying to crack back on somebody. And make a play for their runner to set them free. But now after that initial kickoff return that was on the 17-yard line because the runner stepped out of bounds, had a foot out of bounds, now we're back looking at a first down from about their own seven-yard line. Brandon Ray drew that whistle, just a freshman. Allen will run it again. He bursts through across the 20-yard line. 
Wayne Holmes stopped him at a gain of 13. Again, the timeouts are there for Marshall. They're letting that clock run now. Western Kentucky, they want to go in halftime, take this lead, regroup. A couple of things they're going to need to shore up. I think they're going to go back as we see them come out of the second half here to some of those quicker, easier passes. They've been really leaning on the run game here late in the first half. Allen to the 24, and he's pulled out of bounds. Surprised at Marshall, though they receive in the second half. Surprised they didn't spend any timeouts there? A, a bit. I, I, I am, because they had enough to where, you know, you put a stop together. You had them backed up on the seven-yard line. Not sure what the thought process there was by Doc Holliday. But he's within striking distance now, 49-42. Those he gets the ball back. A big shot for me, though, for Marshall. I know Devin Johnson hasn't been out there, but... Uh, we've, you've had a back who's come in and done a wonderful job and really they, they early they didn't try to establish that run uh, but now as you see that's been the vital cog of them making this late push here in the first half Allen rolls forward with a gain of nine Folks, in this contest more than 800 yards of offense in the first half and 91 points. Wild and crazy football in West Virginia. Right now, let's send it out to Rob Stone in Los Angeles, California. This is wild. Half, and it's it's been incredible. Coy Wire and Darren Sutton. Coy, as we've told you throughout this telecast, longtime NFL linebacker and safety, and of course did the same thing at Stanford. Uh, again, I can't imagine what the defensive coordinators and the defensive players are talking about in the locker room. Records are being broken here today. Both quarterbacks outstanding. Cato has five touchdowns. Dowdy has six. Both offenses are essentially the same rush yards. The difference to me in this game is that the points off turnovers are glaringly obvious. 14 Western Kentucky, only seven for Marshall. That's the difference in this 49-42 game. You get the feeling whoever protects the ball and holds on to it last in this game will end up being the winner. Does the pace stay this breakneck? I don't know how it can. We had four drives from each team that scored in four, five plays or less. I mean, it is just outstanding breakneck pace. I feel like we're watching tennis out here, Dan. And uh, so Ooh, to, them to sustain, like <laughs> to, for them to sustain would be phenomenal. End up breaking some kind of total points record for a game. Both offenses just outstanding. We'll see if either defense has the ability to get some strength in here on the edges and shut down some of this pass game. You look at these total yards. I mentioned it earlier in the first half, but these are yardage totals that you expect to see at the end of a game. Both teams rated about 10 yards per play. It's phenomenal. We'll see what kind of defensive adjustments have been made coming out here to start the second half. A return of 23 yards, and away we go with more offense. And Marshall heads back out, seeing what they certainly can do. Again, our halftime stats were brought to you by our good friends and partners with Geico. Cato ready to go. Stuart Butler still in the backfield. Devin Johnson nursing that sore shoulder, one of the nation's best running backs, has not been able to contribute. Bangs off the front wall and then stumbles. No gain there. And Nick Holt, kind of the heart and soul defensively, but Holt was there, the defensive coordinator's son, Nick Holt. Yeah, he's the guy out there, the general, the commander. He's been around this defense for years. His first year playing under, first time he's ever had the opportunity to play under his coach, his dad, but he knows the system well, gets guys lined up. You see him there walking around before the snap, disguising. Butler's got a hole. Shakes one tackle and another across midfield to the 49-yard line. A rumble of 21 yards. Call the insurance company because that left side of the line just got dented by the Herd's offensive lineman. Look at that. First two plays of the game establishing, shall I say, reestablishing that run game that started to find success there late in the first half of the game. From the 49, Cato will throw this time. It is complete to Monte. Allen was his target. Allen's sixth catch. He's over 140 yards after that game of six. So two run plays and a, a quick, easy pass to start the second half. 
When you look at how this game started, Hakeem Cato sent him deep, had two bombs to, to open up this game. A little bit of change of mode here to start the second half. Tips on the bottom side with the play action. Cato. Went for sure. The throw was high up and over his head. Fortunately, it didn't end up in the hands of Western Kentucky. I thought Rakeem had Shuler earlier in the down. Well, here you're looking at the left side of the screen. Look at a little bit of face mask there, no call. But Rakeem started looking to the right side of his field. I thought he had Shuler earlier in that down, but he had some pressure. He ran, got flushed out of the pocket and had a misfire there at the end of the down. Third and four on the 43-yard line of Western Kentucky. Stewart Butler this time. Butler wheels and deals. He's got the first down. Takes a half dozen to bring him down after the gain of 11. What a great story Butler's been. How about the chess match here? Something that coaches saw. Look, the right side of your screen, the defenders are going to drop out. Okay, and that opens up this running lane. That was a third and five situation, oh, and, and, and Rocker misses a tackle there, but uh, this chess match starting to develop now. These teams are starting to figure each other out. Stewart Butler, 125 yards, but they're giving some yards back. Down he goes. Brian Shorter with the sack out of Phoenix City, Alabama. That cost Marshall 11 at an axe stunt here on this play and well executed. Check out these two guys in the center of your screen here. And this is what's going to set it free. You have one that gets the center to bite and the other one comes off and makes the sack. That's a huge loss on a first down. Brian Shorter, excellent job staying tight to that scoop that he comes off of the defensive tackle's rear end there. And it was well executed. You're looking now at a second and 21. Huge loss for the herd. Shorter five and a half sacks this season. This time stacked up at the line. A gain of four. Pushed it through. But that's all. And they needed more than that. By the way for Western Kentucky. That's their first to sack a moment ago. Well you see Butler there looked as if he's limping off the screen a bit. Now you're talking about going down to, to Watson there, who's a junior. The loss of Devin Johnson has been huge in this game. We haven't talked about it much, but that's got the guy who really gets the tempo going. And how about the sack, the strip, force, fumble off the back? It looked like we have the herd fell on it, but almost near disaster there in a drive where Marshall coming out of the first half, left side of your screen, look at the dip and rip and the bend on that play to take away the shoulder and get skinny. Excellent job of keeping his head out there so as not to get a unsportsmanlike conduct there with reaching around and stripping the football. The herd fortunate there. Yet an offensive lineman rallying to fall on that one. Drew Davis with the sack that time. Check the numbers. That's Western Kentucky's third quarterback sack. They did it last week against UAB, and it won him the contest. A punt of 46 yards, Tyler Williams. His teammates will tell you he does it all the time in practice. Look, you want to play for Marshall and do important things, do things like Heilig Foster does. You better contribute this way, too. Special teams puts Marshall defensively in great position against Western Kentucky. And in doubt, he has his hands full. And he has Leon Allen as his insurance policy. There's some motion in the backfield. It is Allen. There is a hole. At the seven, he is stacked up. But again, special teams, a point of pride for the Marshall Thundering Herd. Heilig Foster, a great play. Really instrumental last week in helping them win that game. And Heilig Foster did an outstanding job getting the feet and possessing the football. The play is over. As soon as he possesses that football, it's over. It doesn't matter where he dropped the ball or any of that. The ball never crossed the plane. Outstanding play. He's best the team's face of the game. Well, here's Allen again, though, trying to reverse fortunes. And he's got a Western Kentucky first down. Taekwon Lang pushes him out of bounds after he gained five. Really, Marshall has had no answer for this run game. Yet Brandon Ray, the redshirt freshman, pulling around for Leon Allen, was pulling Offensive linemen for the Hilltoppers have been instrumental in them rushing for over 150 yards in the first half alone. Allen nearly 10 yards per carry, as you saw a moment ago. 
Both of these teams are more than nine yards per play. Allen again. Pitch out of the backfield. Taken down at the 20 yard line. He grabbed six yards that time. Jermaine Holmes stopped him. Really hitting the perimeter of this Marshall defense. Leon Allen again following a big offensive lineman. That time it was Joe Manley pulling out in front. It's as if they're trying to get Marshall to bring one of their safeties down in the box. And that's where they want him because then that's where they can open it up with the pass again. Marshall here, you can see him loading the box with the defenders. Look at everyone in there now to stop the run. Is it bait? Allen with a cutback. That's his front line. Help him earn five yards and a first down. Well, he is very winding it, isn't he? He, he really is. Uh, Looked like he was clearly down on this play. Get a, should get a good look of it here. Knee down, hip down. Plays over. A lot of two tight end sets here to start off this drive of the second half. There is pressure, a lot of it, but Downey eludes the pressure. Hits Tyler Higby across midfield to the 45-yard line. 31 yards on that completion to the tight end. Dowdy came across the formation. Protection a little bit shaky there, but how about Dowdy buying time to step up? Quarterback was pressured by Jermaine Holmes, but no one accounted for the tight end sneaking out in the flat. A busted coverage there resulting in big yards for the Hillsoppers. Pair of wide receivers. Bottom of your screen. Quick fire. Willie McNeil edges for just a couple, got two yards on that play. He had some heat from Daryl Roberts and Taj Letman. Outstanding discipline football there by Roberts and Letman. One forces the ball back inside to his partner, and then also those defensive linebackers and linemen run into the ball. Two-yard gain on first down. That's a win for the defense. The redshirt senior quarterback in the shotgun. His man that time, it's Jared Dangerfield. Dangerfield grabs eight yards and moves the chains again. Much different start to this half than was to the first half of this game. When we were seemingly scoring a touchdown every five plays, now time-consuming drives, more methodical, chipping away at the defenses. some pressure and adjustment and to the 29 yard line it was Jared Dangerfield again he managed six yards that time attacking laterally now early in the game it was tacking vertically you're gonna see from the left side of your screen there Dangerfield on that submarine boot that's a long way to go for a defensive back to to cover and you can see they're really testing these defensive backs they have them running side to side laterally with these crossing patterns with these submarine type actions where receivers and tight ends are dragging underneath behind the line of scrimmage very difficult for the defenders barreling for just a couple of yards as they continue to move the pile Corey Tindall with the stop Leon Allen with the run lined up in a nickel position there that was an outstanding job by Corey Tindall the sophomore getting up in there against the big back 235 pounder took his legs out from under him Bigger they are, the harder they fall. At the right side, big yes. third down here. Yes, they do fall hard. We have seen some sticks, but again, offense has ruled the day. The tenth play of this drop. It's Allen. It's a leap and a tumble up and over the pile. The acrobatic move over Daryl Roberts. He gains a pair. How about the athleticism? You have a pulling lineman there coming around. Good patience by Allen seeing that and spotting that. How about that? Superman taking off for the first down on a third and two. Offensive coordinator trusting the big back to find a way to keep those chains moving. He delivered. Clock moves, change move. Allen pushes towards 200 yards on the day. Across the middle, throw is intended for Taewon Taylor. Missed him by quite a bit. First time they went vertical 
and attacked vertically on this defense. They were setting them up with the crossing patterns, a lot of short routes. Now they send four verticals coming down the scenes here as we get inside the 25-yard line. Really just keeping this defense on its heels. Nothing to, to tee off on. Second and ten. This time, too, we've seen Western Kentucky weave their wide receivers across the middle. And the throw a little bit firm. Willie McNeil, there was some pressure by A.J. Leggett, who stuck with McNeil. Oh, great coverage there by Leggett. The sophomore out of Miami. I mean, that was a one-on-one -on -one situation. They went back. That time, they sat the outside receivers down, but they had the inside receivers, one being Willie McNeil running vertical, trying to attack that seam up the hash. And Leggett shut him down. Third and ten. Allen stays in the backfield. Three wide receivers on the near sideline. There is work being done well shy of the first down. Willie McNeil only gets five with that bit of extra work. A.J. Leggett was there for the stop. My yeah, goodness, we've seen a lot of extra points, but what about a field goal? I about to say, I mean, we start this half off with a punt and now a field goal. No touchdowns. We were spoiled in that first half. Such explosive offensive plays. A high-scoring affair. Defensive coordinators, tip your hat to them for finally at least to slow them down a bit. 35-yard attempt. Garrett Schwetman. And it's hammered. Flag is down. But the kick is blocked. And we will see what this flag, obviously, it was all football, so we'll see. Yeah, but the kicker ran into him. I think this is going to be a penalty on Marshall here. Dowdy is the holder. He's in this discussion, the quarterback for Western Kentucky. Let's see. Personal foul, roughing the kicker. Defense number 22, after distance to the goal, automatic first down. Corey Tyndall. Let's see who actually blocks this kick, because if it's Tyndall coming off the edge, if it was 10, no, then it wasn't. It looked like it was 94, Jarquez Samuel who had the block on that play, but can hear the crowd not happy because if he had blocked that kick and he was the one to run into the kicker, you're not going to get the foul. But from the camera angle we saw, it didn't look like that was the case. And so instead of a huge turning point inside of the 10-yard line, it's first and goal, and it's Leon Allen seeing his number 33 called again. Quite, quite, uh, that's a gain of pair, by, by the way. That's bad luck. I mean, quite frankly, that's just some bad luck. Yeah, I mean, you have a guy who shows great effort getting off the edge there, and you know he did run into the kicker, but that it was his teammate who would have had a block had he not committed the foul. That's frustration for the herd. That would have been a huge stop there for the defense. Defense, special teams, very important to the thundering herd. And we just thought they had made themselves a very special play. Throw high up and over the head of McNeil. Let's see kind of this tough luck play one more time. Yeah, we got to check this out because you have Tyndall checking the middle of your screen there. 94 gets that hand up, and yes, that that, that was the block. And uh, just to confirm, the officials see if it was 10 coming off the side there. Tyndall, he did not get a hand on it, and he did rough the kicker. So, yeah, to your point, bad luck. You have a guy who blocks a kick and makes an outstanding play in the game, but on that play, you get the flag. Marshall hopes to see the Western Kentucky kicker again. It's third and eight. There is no more time. He is taken down by Jarquez Samuel, the senior out of Valdosta, Georgia, a loss of 10. So there he was not going to be denied making a play for his team. This was the guy who did get a hand up and block the kick. How about the coverage? You see the secondary there. There's Tyndall. Showing out for his guys, locking down the slot. But Samuel, the 273-pound big fella from Valdosta, Georgia, with the big play on third down. And brought the special teams out again for another field goal attempt. You can hear the hurt crowd. They're not happy. It was a good call by the officials. We'll see what happens on this attempt. 
Timeout is called. Schwetman came on the field limping just a little bit. Remember, he was taken out on that penalty flag a moment ago. Somehow, we have come back in the second half and have not lit up the scoreboard. We'll see what follows in a moment. Do keep an eye on Garrett Schwetman, the police kicker for Western Kentucky. He was hobbled coming off. This kick will be for 35 yards, from 30 to 39 yards. He's 14 of 19 in his career. And he looks uncomfortable. The last kick, you know, you showed us several replays, Coy, and talked about it. It was a low kick. That's one of the reasons it was blocked. A low, low kick. It's from the same distance. Let's see if he can elevate. His quarterback is his holder. And again, it's black. And again, it's low. He looked like that time he slipped a bit. Either that or the ankle gave a bit. You can see him hobbling to the kick, Darren. Tri definitely affect him on that kick. Another low one. How about this? Defense shows up to start the second half. Both teams. Player Texas, Arnold Blackman. Blocked that low trajectory kick. Check him out here in the trenches. Two weeks in a row, stepping up. Here he gets a hand up on a low kick to block it. Last week, check out the how good is his buddy feeling about giving that offense an extra set of downs and another attempt at a field goal, but his teammate Blackman pulls through for him. Two weeks in a row, Blackman has stepped up. Last week, he was instrumental in that victory over UAB that was a close one. He had the forced fumble that resulted in a strip fumble recovery for a touchdown to put the herd back on top. Defense, though, for the herd there, stepping up big. Zero points. That was the longest drive. 17 plays, 81 yards, zero points for the Hilltoppers. Cato to Schuler, just across the 30-yard line. Dejan Brown pushed him out after he picked up six. Butler, the opening play of that drive, the running back who, again, coming in in place of Johnson, Devin Johnson with the shoulder injury. Butler's got 133 yards. He's been outstanding. He's, he's getting an opportunity, taking full advantage of it has really given this team a spark. There's a couple of big plays from him in the first half to get some momentum back on the side of Marshall. After a thundering herd first down, it's Cato to Schuler, lowers his shoulder. Well, that's a, that was a special play. I Gain mean, that's a guy working his trade, working his craft. He's one of the best in the biz right now in college football. 5'7", 188 pounds, a senior out of Miami, a true leader for this team. He needs just 20 receptions coming into this game. Now he's down to 17 to break the all-time receiving record here at Marshall. Pushing backwards for six yards in the end, following his offensive line. Seeing a bit of angst from this offensive front now. I mean, they're coming out and they're firing off the ball in the run game. Salty. That's the word they used yeah. to describe them last night, yeah, isn't it? That's right, and they're showing it. Bill Lake called his offensive line salty. I think that is a very appropriate word with an edge to them, and they're playing with it now. Can't hold him back that time. Oh, sure. Standing all day waiting for the football, and he is still not down. Out of bounds at the 26-yard line, turns the volume right up in this crowd. 30 yards on the victory. Cato on the go to the left side of the field, but he comes back to his playmaker. Does he stay in bounds here? Yes. And how about the effort? Had a couple missed tackles on the play. So far, Schuler right now taking it upon himself to give his guys a boost. Schuler, 11 yards per catch in his career. Streaking to the corner, into the bread basket, but he can't hold on. Devontae Allen with the effort there. Prince Charles Iwara was with him. Oh, Devontae Allen almost had him one there. Looked as if he bobbled it and was not able to secure the catch. And, and a, flag. a flag. Getting a little more of what we saw uh. before the game. <laughs> the motions are high. And again, the flag came well after the play.
Hilltoppers defense there, they're getting press coverage. And the defensive backs have been doing a solid job, taking away Cato's first read. Schuler's been finding a way to get open. There almost had a big play over the top to Allen. Would have been a touchdown if he was able to reel it in. We're waiting to see, hear what the officials say happened after that. There play. were fouls by both teams after the play was over. Taunting offense number six. That's number six, second unsportsmanlike foul. Therefore, he is disqualified. Taunting defense. Fouls off set. Second down. So Devontae Allen, number six on that green jersey, is done for this game. Wow. Second one for this game. Two on Sportsman like he's gone. Here was the attempt at the catch. Never secured it. Now check out the penalty. You had a push there from number 30. Okay. Prince Charles of War. And that was the impetus for the reaction the official saw from Devontae Allen. That's a huge loss for this team. Coach Holiday not happy about that because he felt his player was provoked and the toss of that football is what ended up being the demise there of Allen, who's gone. The first, uh, first unsportsmanlike happened earlier in the game after a big play, and you had the little extracurricular activity there by Allen, got a flag, and now that's what the official saw. I'm not sure that he saw the original provocation by Aurora on that play. And thrown out of this game again, there they are, those numbers. 141 receiving yeah. yards. That is a key player that is gone. Big play. So they keep it on the ground this time. Stuart Butler, who has been dangerous in his own right, he earns three yards. That, that's a big loss, and, and that's just frustration setting in and emotions. And you look at this Marshall team, they're the most penalized team in Conference USA. It's been a bit of a thorn in the side of this team. They average about nine fouls a game and almost 85 yards per game. And now that's going to cost them much more than some yardage. Losing Allen like that in a heated game is trouble for this offense. Butler, 142 rushing yards. He will add to that tally. He will add a journey to the end zone. 22-yard touchdown trap. Having it tied at 49 all. Justin Haig is on. They game plan for Devin Johnson. And Devin Johnson, the star running back, had carried the Marshall Thundering Herd. Instead, it's been Stuart Butler who says if they run. What a, what a great story this has been, the contributions of Butler. Yeah, he's been outstanding all day. We talked in the open about Devin Johnson being the nation's third leading rusher coming into this game. He goes out with an injury. But what a replacement we have found here in this game, picking up the slack. Butler, 164 yards on 14 carries, over 11 yards per carry, and two touchdowns. Outstanding. You're going to get Tanner Reeves come in on a stunt here. No linebacker replaces in the tack. The guard, Johansson, may have gotten away with one here. You're going to see him on that stunt. You get that arm wrapped around. Could have been called, in my opinion, but opened up a huge running lane there on third and seven. Stuart Butler took it to the house. We had two defensive stops, one from each team on the first drives of the half. Marshall answers with a touchdown on the second. Ken Western Kentucky match. Leon Allen climbs up over the back of Taj Letman for four yards. And the Marshall defense, they've really been a, a variance from what we're used to in the first half. This quarter, though, they, they returned to their norm, didn't they? It looked more like the defense that had shown on tape. Uh, now, this was a different animal of an offense they've been facing, but yes, they, they held up two blocked field goals there on that last drive. 
after a 17 play and 81 yard drive that took up 733 minutes from the Hilltoppers. The herd sent him away. Jared Dangerfield picks up 11 with that sliding reception, a first down for Western Kentucky as we are nearing the end of the third quarter. And we do so, by the way, with well over a thousand yards of total offense between these two teams. Marshall seeking a perfect regular season, seeking identity to play in a bowl game and do so around New Year's Day. At the end of the third, 49-49. Score by quarter. And you can see how crazy things were heading into the locker room. We can see what has happened here in the third quarter. Coy, I asked you at halftime about what these coordinators were talking about, head coaches like Holiday and Brom, but we see defense finally prevailing a bit. Yeah, and you know, you see a little more zone from Marshall. We'll see what they go to here. If it isn't broke, don't fix it. Is usually the motto, but Brom, he was hitting the run game there early in the start of this half. I'm wondering if he'll go back to what he did to open the game, and that's hit him vertical. We saw one vertical passing route in that last drive. The rest were crossers, shallow crossers. We'll see if he opens it up a bit again. There it is. Dowdy with the play action. He does open it up down the near sideline, and the catch by Norris. Holds on to the football to the 16-yard line. Ledman was there with him. That's a gain of 42. I wondered if he would go back to that. They came out on fire. They started attacking this defense vertically. They get Dowdy on the move, change the launch point, get him away from the pressure. That gives the receivers a lot of time to work their routes. This time, lowering that shoulder and that helmet. Now having Dealing it out to Ledman, it's... The running back. Yes, I mean, and now, now you're getting a bit of deja vu of what, what had happened. I mean, you, you see that vertical hit now handed off to Allen with a pulling lineman in front of him. And we'll see if they keep the pedal to the metal here, continue to attack as opposed to playing it safe with the short, quicker crossing routes. Nearing 400 passing yards. Tight end Mitchell Henry is back in the game. Slot. And it's Mitchell Henry with his hands on the football, taken down at the six-yard line. Daryl Roberts is there, a pickup of seven. Good play design there to get full flow to the left side of that offensive formation and then toss it back to the tight end, who was the lone threat there on the backside in Mitchell Henry. Got the defense to run, got him to over-pursue, and had Henry wide open. Marquez Samuels checks in. And a timeout for Marshall. They were changing their alignment. Three different thundering herd defenders came on. They decided just to reset. With a 30-second timeout. Coy Wire, Darren Sutton, glad to have you in Huntington, West Virginia. 49-49. With Marshall trying to show the nation on this Friday after Thanksgiving that they certainly deserve to be playing on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Now, Western Kentucky, as we told you, and we've mentioned it several times, treating this as their playoff run. They're already bowl eligible. Of course, Marshall, along with Florida State, the only two undefeated teams in the nation. If Western Kentucky getting a seventh win will really help secure them a, a bowl berth. Doesn't make it certain, but sure hope helps. And then with the herd, I mean, they're, they're hoping to be invited to one of the four New Year's six games that aren't assigned a semifinal game as the committee's top-ranked team from a non-power non conference. Problem is, they're currently ranked one spot below Boise State. And it's a financial windfall that is dramatic, the difference in the two types of bowls, and I mean dramatic. Right now, though, they've got to play some defense. It's Allen cutting back inside of the five. He's straightened up. Taj Letman, let's get on on out. It's a game break brought to you by Lowell's. Here's Cole. Darren and Coy, back to you. Our Lowe's game break special teams doing their dance all over the United States on Black Friday. Lofted high, well out of the back of the end zone. Tyler Higby, the tight end, who's had a huge day, was the target. He really has. They tried to get him in the back of the end zone there, put Dowdy out on the run, get him away from the teeth of that defense. Rouse and the boys there in the middle for the herd. Ran that sprint out pass. 
ineffective here. Big third down. The herd stood tall and stout the last drive for the toppers. Five Five of nine on third down. of Willie McNeil as Coy said there it was but the pass wasn't that's who they wanted from the beginning Willie Allen they send them in motion they work the option route he's working one-on-one -on -one and just past the outstretched hands of McNeil Dowdy a bit wide a bit low for Willie McNeil to grab that now here comes our kicker Garrett Schwedman who two field goal attempts ago it was roughing the kicker, hurt his ankle. Comes back the next one, he was hobbling on the field. A low line drive field goal attempt was blocked. We'll see if he can get this one up and over. 21 yard attempt. He does get it up, he gets it over, he gets it in. Made it look easy that time for Schwetman. Got 19 of 20 from that distance. Down dance because these two teams score all the time, five plus, now six times for Marshall. Western Kentucky, though, their resume says they've given up a bunch of touchdowns along with scoring a bunch. Yeah, no doubt. And I mean, they came out on fire in that first half, and they got after it right away. Western Kentucky, this entire game, has gone with the short kick, not kicking it deep. How about Rakeem Cato today? Start off with three interceptions in this game, and in the first half, though, that still had five touchdowns. He's delivered. Second half, we'll see if he can come out and lead his team to victory to keep the team's hopes alive for a New Year's Six Bowl. More career passing yards than legends Byron Leftwich and Chad Pennington, and it's dramatically more. That one is rumbled forward for six yards. Stewart Butler. Stewart Butler, he coming into this drive, 164 yards, 11.7 yards per carry in Devin Johnson's absence. He stepped up in a major way to keep the herd right in this fight. Now at 52 to 49 with the Hilltoppers leading. That's a big six-yard gain on first down. Second and four, ball on the 44. Cato has time, there's Schuler right into that number one to the 41-yard line, a gain of 19. What an outstanding move Schuler put in the slot here. Check this out, the stick, bam. Gets the head inside, puts up the hand, says, feed me, Cato. He's really stepped up here in the second half. He's a bit quiet in the first. The game on the line. The seniors' time to shine. 600 total yards plus for Western Kentucky. Marshall about to go over 500 and maybe find the end zone again. Rumbling, working. Stewart Butler, the backup running back. Offensive line just fired off the ball. There was a mixed, missed tackle on the play, but watch this offensive line just mauling, pancaking blockers like a bunch of snow plows out there just mowing them down for Stewart to take another big hit. A potential score for Marshall. Kato, he's got some time, he dances around. Flag is on the play, Butler with the short reception. Just a yard gain. Butler was there, set to protection first. Offense number 71, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. That was Sebastian. Joe Hansen, remember we talked about how maybe he had held on that touchdown run. He was the one called here. You see him get that little bit of an arm bar and torque in the twist of the defensive tackle. And it might be because of that way that hand's ripped up. He, he doesn't have all his levers the way they he would like to use them. And he's forced to adapt and improvise. Gets called for the hold there. Kato across the middle and it's picked off. He was trying to get Schuler. And instead, that one goes down from Singh, taking it across the 35-yard line, a 34-yard interception return. And the senior, Ricardo Singh, with the interception.
What a play. Seeing in the middle of the field. Look at him reading. Flips the hips. Eyes on the prize. Looks it all the way in. That's a difference maker play for the Hilltoppers. Look out. What an outstanding interception here by Ricardo Singh. You see him there in the center field. Cato looks off to the right. He thinks the safety's going to bite. He does not. He keeps those hips. He flips them. Eyes on the prize. Reels it in. Kids watching at home. That's how you play center field safety. Ricardo Singh stepping up big here in the second half for his team. Warded off a scoring attempt by the Herd. Tying a single game mark. He never wanted to tie with four interceptions in a game. So Leon Allen goes back to grinding. Swings out to the far sideline. Earns no gain there. You know, for perspective, Cato had thrown eight picks all season long. And he's come to half that total in this contest alone. That Hilltopper defense that we had talked about the previous three games showed vast improvement under defensive coordinator Nick Holt and stepping up in a major way today against one of the conference's best offenses. And then Dowdy. Get rid of that one, make the right decision. There was some heat being brought. So third and ten. Really putting Dowdy on the move here in the second half. Trying to build up that confidence again. He's really effective out of the pocket. Changing that launch point and talking with offensive coordinator Tyson Held and Coach Brom before the game said that that was going to be a must. The way this herd defensive front gets after it, that was going to be vital to get the quarterback some confidence. It worked in the first half, but here we are again in a third and long situation. Marshall digging in. Five of ten on third down attempts. First down. Great strike to Taiwan Taylor, 14 in the end. Earlier in the game, in the first half, Marshall rushed two, dropped nine into coverage. It confused Dowdy that time. They tried it again, and he connected. Dowdy, 412 passing yards. These two teams are now up over 1,100 total yards between them. Has help as he cuts back to the 40, to the 30. Flag flies as he goes down right at about the 21 yard line. Marshall calling for a hold, gain of 29. Might be Taewon Taylor, the receiver there at the end of the play. Biting, scratching, claw, and trying to get his running back some more yardage on the play. Defensive back was fighting to get off, and it looked like I saw some jersey being pulled. Holding offense number two, 10 yard penalty, and the play results in a first half. Yeah, out there on the edge, Taewon Taylor, number two, Hilltopper offensive line, great job. There you see the jersey, and it's when the defensive back pulls away that it got extended there towards the end of the play. Easy call for the official. Anthony Wales checks in. He's in the backfield, the sophomore of Louisville, Kentucky. Lines up next to Dowdy. Serves as a fullback. Fighting for some freedom and a beautiful play by Dangerfield, who streaks to the end zone as he cuts back between the hash marks. 35-yard touchdown. How about the precision? by Brandon Dowdy on that play, putting the ball to Dangerfield on the back shoulder. Watch this back shoulder stop route. The receiver says, if I'm even, I'm leaving, but he's not. So he busts back, Dowdy reads it, sees that the defensive back is high. That's communication, that's chemistry right there between the quarterback and his receiver. Excellent execution to take it to the house. Garrett Schwetman finds the uprights yet again. They're on the road. They're looking to embrace the role of spoiler. They call every game do or die. And you know what? Today, they're playing like it. Dot com. And that's a good thing around this holiday season. Coy and Darren, glad to have you back with us in this wild and woolly 59-49 Western Kentucky lead. Mike Mugler will kick it off. But DeAndre Reeves will not end up with that football. Instead, it's Remy Watson. 
Second string running back across the 41 42 yard line, gain of 16. Well, Rakeem Cato has had a rough day. Normally an outstanding decision maker. There's Leston stepping in front of his first interception. And then a second one, a miscommunication with the receiver. Leston again, a third interception. And then it was Ricardo Singh stepping in front on the last drive. Bad decision there by Cato. And not the performance this team wanted to put together. Who needs to impress the committee to be able to move ahead of Boise State, who's ranked one spot above them. Take yeah. it off. Look he at that. made a big decision. Stumbled on his own there with enough cutbacks to fool himself. He gained 16. Good block, good block by his back there, Stuart Butler. Nothing there. You're seeing the eyes down the field. Looks to his first read. One thought about taking it deep. A little apprehensive after that last poor decision on the interception he threw. So good job taking it as much as he can get on the ground. Lived to fight another down here, but picked up a nice first down in the process. Clock moving, first and 10. Ball on the 43-yard line. Three yards on a push and a dive by Stuart Butler. Well, what you're talking about, we, we certainly want to say hello to all the members of the football program with Boise State that are watching this game very closely this right. afternoon. Yeah, Boise State's a two-loss team, and Marshall is going to be Utah State's biggest fan. Utah State's a 9-3 team. If they can knock off Boise State, it's going to really help Marshall, obviously, because today what they're putting out here for the committee is not helping their cause to be the highest-ranked non-Power 5 team. Well, certainly a win is now mandatory in a game like this. Every loss can eliminate, and a big, big adjustment. Deontay McManus with the catch, 14 yards. But again, Cato earned that right. He sure did. Bought himself some time. Outstanding covers there initially by Marcus Ward, who's been solid in coverage. I've been keeping an eye on him. He's been often matched up in the slot, taking away Rakeem Cato's first read. He's a big part of the reason Cato's looked frustrated today. Four wide receiver set. Butler in the backfield. Goals out of block. Shula tries to cut back. He gained three. Just big picture stuff here again in this fight for a New Year's Six Bowl. Boise State right now currently one spot above Marshall as designated by the committee. Even at 9-2, even though Marshall's 11-0, their strength of schedule was weaker. The committee member came out and said that it, their schedule, Boise State's, is far and away better than Marshall's. And that's the justification for having them ranked one spot above. So now you have Marshall here who struggled last week against UAB. Let's check this out real quick. Did Mr. Schuler grab this? It looked as if he had possession, secured it, rolled over. It's a catch. Here Marshall making a push now inside the 10-yard line. This is about the area where Cato got picked off on the last series. Let's see if he can deliver. Cato moves to Butler. Bangs heads and moves to the two-yard line. A gain of seven. Nick Holt. Wow. Was there to try to build a roll. How about St Stuart Butler there with a safety 38. Ricardo Singh, who made Singh's ears ring on that one, lowered the boom. Physical run. And they go right back to work and lose a yard. Trying to catch Western Kentucky napping. They turned out to be wide awake. Big third down here. Excellent penetration by Devontae Terrell on that play to shut it down. They tried to go with three quick hits right up the gut of that Hilltopper defense. They've risen to the challenge now. Third and goal from the two-yard line. Game on the line. This is huge. Alec Foster lined up in the slot on the top of your screen amongst a pair of wide receivers. Butler weaves, works, cuts back, and gets into the end zone with a two-yard push. That's trust right there. Bill Legg, the offensive coordinator, three runs in a row to the heart of that defense. Mendelssohn, Johansson just burst. Cody Collins and Van Horn, look at that, getting some push. They're going to review this. It was called a touchdown on the play. Jeff Brom's not so sure about it, but there has to be 
beyond the shadow of a doubt reason to overturn this. We're going to have to get the correct angle and see here. This one, you see that leg drive still not down. It may be close. How's it look from this angle? Looks very red. That one's very red. That one's tough to see. Again, because they called it a touchdown on the play, there has to be beyond a shadow of a doubt that it should be overturned. And with all the technology we have, we're relying on those cameras to get the job done. And Brom's only hope is that there's one angle that shows that he indeed was down before that ball crossed. In his first year as a head coach, Jeff Brom, just 43 years old, left of your picture. Doc Holliday has really done great work here at Marshall. Waits the decision. It's tough to find an angle. Let's see this one. Picking, picking his way through there. Actually did a good job of finding any bit of crease to get through. Ricardo Singh comes up, lays a hit. Nick Holt leaning, trying to prevent that push by Stuart Butler on the play. Boy, I'll tell you this. I know it has to be indisputable, but from the end zone camera, he looked down. Looked it, like it hip did. was down. Yeah, and that's the tough part because because of that angle, was it? Can you justify overturning it beyond the shadow of a doubt again, as our Mike Pereira would say? So it'll be interesting to, to see their decision here. It's going to be close any way you call it. If it does stay as a touchdown the likely ruling would be that it stands because it's so obscure. His hip was down, and his helmet on the end zone angle was short of the end zone. And the ball was behind the helmet, then he reached with the ball. Yeah, this is game on the line. That's a third down. The, qu the other question you ask, do they go for it on fourth down? And, you know, you'd think that they'd have to. Being down here this far, Western Kentucky has been virtually unstoppable in this game. You're going to have to go for it on fourth down, in my opinion, for Doc Holliday. Let's bring in Mike Pereira out in Los Angeles. Mike, this is a tough angle, isn't it? It is a tough angle, but I think this is one where you can piece together and put them short because the shot looking in from the end zone shows the shoulder down. And then this shot here, you know the ball is below, below where the helmet is. And the helmet is clearly down at that point with the shoulder, and then he shoves the ball over. So with this shot, you know the shoulder's down. You can see the shoulder down. And to me, you piece them together and put it short. After further review, the runner's elbow was down before he extended the ball over the goal line. Therefore, it is fourth down at the one-foot line, and the game clock will start on the referee's signal. Mike, you were right on. Interesting. Yeah, inter interesting because I do think this was a good decision by replay having to piece them together because, Coy, you're right. You know, you talk about nowadays they don't overturn anything unless it's beyond a shadow of a doubt. You know, but to me, the piecing of the, the two together made it uh, reversible. Thank you, Mike. Justin Haig is on to attempt. Justin Haig. 17-yard field goal, and so instead of going for it, interesting trying to, decision. Trying to grab those seven points, I guess. Coach Doc Holliday deciding, how oh, what the heck? I, I guess I'll take the three. He's down seven. Thinking about him and hearing that news when this game was out on our grid. You know, Chad, just a first-class individual. They opted to name the Hall of Fame, which just opened today for all of the fans to come in. In his name, the Chad Peddington Marshall Football Hall of Fame, I think a deserving honor. He tried to fight it because he's pretty down to earth, but I think he deserves it. Yeah, absolutely. A lot, a lot of good difference makers here for this organization and the university. Piecing together a perennial powerhouse here, Chad Peddington being one of them. We saw the beautiful facilities yesterday, the Chris Klein Athletic <laughs> Complex. From these great facilities to the great facilities in Los Angeles, here is Cole Wright with the game break. Good stuff, Arizona State trying, I think, truly to rebound from the Oregon State debacle a couple of weeks back. They had national title hopes in their future. I guess you can make it a great season if you beat your bitter rival. Yeah. All right, here we go. I've got a question for you after this first play. It may be answered right away. Allen out of the backfield on the screen. 
And the first down for Western Jump Kentucky. Down. How Good much will Allen. Allen, after he picks up 12, be a part of running the football to eat some clock? It's a great question. You know, Darren, we talked about how at the beginning of the half here in the second half, they came out and tried to run it. They tried the short, quick passes, and it didn't work. It was when they went back to that vertical game that had them success in the first half that they started moving that ball again. So even though you think they'd want to kind of run out the clock here, you have to question, are they going to do that as it was unsuccessful, or will they just open, keep it wide open and hit downfield? Allen is grabbed hard, big James Rouse. Double match sticks, number 11, a loss of three. All game, the defensive tackle, the beast in the trenches, number 11. You see that the two guys were there in front of him trying to address the issue that is James Rouse. This guy will play on Sundays. He's fun to watch. Life Lindsay, a swimmer here at Marshall. He's already got his degree. And Rouse with a huge lick that time. The clock working. And the whistle blows. Did they not get it off in time? No timeout was called. Mr. Kentucky burned one of their timeouts. 59-52. The Thunder and Herd looking for a stick and a stop. We'll do it. It comes down to these four minutes. Marshall must win this contest. A stop, then an offensive stand to move forward. They want to play on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. Quick strike, a gain of seven. That's Willie McNeil with the reception. There, there, there's no other way to discuss it. It's, as wildly successful as their season has been, they must be undefeated to make their case. They must be undefeated. And start right here on this third down, third and six, this defense has to step up. Will it be that man, James Rouse, to be the one that steps up? Who's it going to be? Someone has to step up and make a play. Maybe Neville Hewitt there at the linebacker position, one of the playmakers. This is huge. Brandon Dowdy's in the mode of spoiler right now. Six of 11 on third down attempts for Western Kentucky. Dowdy has some pressure, slides right through it. A little lob and it's batted down. Daryl Roberts went up the ladder to knock it away from Jared Dangerfield. Daryl Roberts was the one at the point of attack of that play. Across the board, man coverage. Look at all the crossers. What has been finding them success earlier in the game? It was Daryl Roberts that plastered to his man. That was a long time to cover. The offensive line gave Dowdy some time on that. In the end, it was Roberts who won out, got a hand on the ball, forcing the punt. Marshall's going to have a long way to go. Akapenti pins it back. Gets a friendly roll to about the 17 yard line, a punt of 41 yards. So many great memories, led by Randy Moss in 96. Marshall, they rolled through Division I AA on their way to a perfect season and a national championship. One of the greats of all time, Randy Moss. Then in 99, Chad Pennington, we talked about him. They were 13 0. Motor City Bowl a little earlier, though, in the year. 11-0 start this year. They're looking to reach their third unbeaten season in 18 years. They don't want to play on December 27th in the Motor City-type bowl, though. Yeah, they want to play about. later. It all comes down to this here. We talked about the, uh, the implications financially that affects this year. I mean, you're talking about a big difference, not just for this team, but the conference as a whole. If Marshall finds a way to get into a New York's New Year's Six Bowl. Yeah, huge implications for Conference USA. When you're just focusing on the kids and the athletes themselves and their families. And these are the kind of fight it out games that Marshall has been proud of. Cato, long launch over the head of Heilig Foster, the freshman. Well, Cato was going for it all on one play. He had man-to-man, Tyler Foster on Brandon Leston. and took a shot. Ball sailed on him a bit far. After a run on first down, a shot on second, the herd finds themselves in a third and five situation here with 2.41 to play. A lot riding on this down. Four of eight on third down attempts. 
Cato with some pressure. He sees that first down. He's got to get there, and he does. A scamper of 15 yards. Cato looking downfield. Nothing there. Thought about dishing it off. On short route to the left there to a wide receiver who was covered. Ends up taking it upon himself to pick up the first down on the ground. Clock rolls at 220 in the contest. Cato eludes, finds some freedom, has some good blocks. There's Schuler, his buddy. I mean, this is, this is chemistry between these guys that goes way back to their youth. They've been playing together a long time. It's almost like they can read each other's minds. Schuler and Cato connect there on a playground-like play. Good coverage all, the, all across the board. Schuler's got nine catches for 122 yards today. Gain of three right at midfield. Gavin Rocker was there. Going back to the zone read there. Stuart Butler hitting up the inside. Jeff Brom thinks he sees what's going on. Taking a strike. Telling his guys to get back. Cato. A A little firm over Deontay McManus. Crowd wanted a flag. Just the crowd. Wanted a bump. Deontay McManus was one-on-one -on -one with Cam Thomas. Cato again going for the big strike. A little bit of hand check, hand fight going on there. No call by the officials. Cam Thomas, the 6'1", 190-pound senior, stepped up there for the Hilltoppers. Schuler lined up in the slot on the near side. Third and seven. Looks at Schuler, looks and hits him. It was just going to happen. He picked up 10. Game on the line. It's no surprise who they're going to. Tommy Shuler. This is a guy who had 100-plus receptions in the two seasons prior to this one. Now coming into this season, he was in the 50s. But it's because defenses had to address the issue and take him away. He's stepping up in a big moment here for the Herd. He's in the slot once again near sideline. Shuler number one in that jersey. Wide open foul sideline Craig Wilkins to the 21 yard line 20 yards that time and a first down defensive back fell down on the play there it was Cam Thomas he was sinking back into a deep third against Wilkins and when that ball was thrown he tried to come back his foot gave out on him a bit and slipped big pickup for the herd who's marching Stewart in the backfield he'll take the handoff on a draw, works hard. Boy, he added a couple of yards to that carry just based on effort. Seven total. Five foot nine, 185 pounds. But he's running like his counterpart, Devin Johnson, today. Breaking tackles, getting the hard yard. Marshall now with one timeout remaining. 54 seconds left in the game. They were in a tough one last week against UAB. They were down in this game, that game, and UAB was a team, remember, who put up 500 yards against Mississippi State earlier in the year when they barely lost to Mississippi State. They had that big scare. They found a way to win. It was a good punt, and then a forced fumble and recovery for a touchdown for the Herd, and a big fourth down stop at the end of the game to prevent UAB from coming back. They enter into this game undefeated, and now the undefeated dream season on the line here with 59 seconds left, second and three. They put together an outstanding drive thus far. This is the tenth play of the drive. So those numbers for Stewart Butler a moment ago. In the day's stories, Devin Johnson star back, shoulder injury. Only able to carry the ball three times. Instead, Cato has leaned on Stuart Butler, who has in turn leaned on his offensive line. 59 seconds, here we go. Cato lofts it long out Smart. of the back of the end zone. Smart play. He wanted Tommy Schuler in the slot. 
but it was good coverage by the Hilltoppers there. So a veteran quarterback tried to make some forced throws earlier in the game. Cato was pressured on that play by Gavin Rocker. Smart play, throw it out of bounds. Two down territory now. Well, here we go. Third and three. Cato out of the shotgun. Works. He sees the end zone. He heads that way, but he has to chop out of bounds after picking up seven. Brandon Leston, as Cato saw the end zone, saw Cato and cut him off at the pass. Some of the best quarterback throws are the ones they don't make. Two plays in a row. Cato, smart decision. Held onto the ball. Looked as if he wanted to try to hit his corner route there in the back of the end zone, but the safety was over the top. Would have been at least a pass breakup, if not an interception. Smart job pulling it down. Taking off for the run. I mean, Watson is in on a play fake. Fun apple stretches into the end zone for a touchdown. The tight end out of the backfield with a five-yard touchdown strike. What a drive by the herd. They finished it off with a touchdown. It was Frone Apple, who was lined in the backfield, snuck out behind the line of scrimmage. Check this out. It's been a couple of these in this game. Looked like that hip was very near to being down. Remember, not long ago, Stewart Butler, they ruled a touchdown, reviewed it, and reversed it, took it away. And here we are again now with the game on the line. It's Eric Fronapple this time. Ruled the touchdown, but they're going to review it. Was that knee or hip down? And it may have been. Let's see here. Got the tackle. The forearm actually as well. You see right there on that play may be down before that ball is across. This is a tough overturn in comparison to the one we saw a moment this ago. Tough. A lot of situations in this game, Darren. Remember when Leon Allen scored in the first half and they missed a knee being down. It was too late to go back and overturn it. Then Stewart Butler had one overturn. There's thrown out at the top of the screen. The tackle, and it looks like that elbow is down there. This is, you look at that shin too. It looked like the shin right here is down before the elbow. So that's the point at which they're gonna pause that and see where was the ball when that shin was down. That was the first part that touched the ground. Again, that indisputable evidence, it's required. You can't really see when the ball crosses the plane. Yeah, the camera angles are not being favorable now as far as getting the best look at this. Tough decision. We heard Mike Pereira before talk about piecing together. Here we go. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. So the herd, Eric Fronapple with the touchdown. It is confirmed. And he didn't say stands. That means they were certain that that was a touchdown. Confirmed on the replay. Doc Holliday's team now lining up for the extra point attempt. To Justin, tie this game. Justin Haig's biggest assignment of the day. And he passed that test like he has all afternoon long. We are tied at 59 apiece with 39 seconds left. What a game this has been. Outstanding collective efforts by both teams staying in this emotionally. All game outstanding individual efforts like Eric Cronapple there. With an outstretched arm to put the ball across the plane with 39 seconds to play and tie this ball game. 118 points between these two. I know you can do that math, folks at home, but we'll add to that. 
1,358 yards of offense as well combined. 1,358 yards. One thing here, Darren, this, this crowd, you can hear the music start to pick up now. They need to get loud. There's been a couple times in this game where the noise has affected Brandon Dowdy. In fact, they've had to call two timeouts in this half because that play clock was running down. Now, just one timeout remains for the Hilltoppers. Rob checking out his playlist, remembering, recalling what hit them, what has worked against this defense. What else going to in this moment? Thirty-nine seconds remain. Both teams, one timeout remaining. Look at it overtime, unless something dramatic changes. We'll see. Some of the biggest hits in this game, Darren, for this Hilltopper offense and Brandon Dowdy have been when Jeff Brom has put him on the run to his right, and the wide receivers run layer routes, double moves out there, even on the outside. We'll see if that's one of the first plays he goes to get Brandon Dowdy on the move to his right, change that launch point. But what a game this has been. Highest scoring game in stadium history. They've been battling out all day. 39 seconds to play. A pair of wide receivers on the top side, Leon Allen. Takes the draw. Leon with a first down. He picks up 13 yards. Clock will stop as the chains are moved. Remember, one timeout remains for Western Kentucky. And again, it's Allen. And again, bangs bodies, moves forward seven yards. Kaj Letman, Neville Hewitt were there defensively. Western this time calls the timeout. 19 seconds to play. You got to think about field goal range here. How close do they have to get it to get a successful try? Get it to that 25 yard line. You're talking about a 42 yard approximate attempt. Wetman's long is 44 in his career. And he's had a tough day today. Kicks have been low, ankle tweaked, leg tweaked a bit. On a roughing the kicker call. Been fine on his extra point attempts. Enough to get it to about the 27-yard line to equal what be an, would be an attempt for Schwetman's long. Play action this time. Downfield kick, and it's intercepted. With the game clock at 10, Taj Lettman has it on an interception, a ball that was tipped, batted up into the air. Husky knocked it loose, Lettman hauled it in, and oh boy, 10 seconds left, let's see. Dowdy drops back, fires, tries to fit it in there, and Raheem Husky, a red shirt freshman with the tip. Six foot two, 209 pounds out of Gaffney, South Carolina, and Brandon Dowdy knows how this one ends. That played outstanding all game. But what an effort by Husky to get a hand on that pass. 10 seconds remain. Hague's career long is 45 yards. 45 yards is Justin Hague's career long. There is some space for Butler as he pushes forward. They've got a timeout Time left. Four seconds remaining. 13 yards on the run. Walk me through this now. Yeah, this is, as it stands, to be about a 57 yard. And four, not enough to run a play. No, not enough to run a play and give you another shot, so. It'd be an interesting decision here. Doc Holliday's team has fought to come back from quite the deficit early in this game. And 
made some defensive adjustments to slow down that Western Kentucky offense that was on fire early in this game. Now it comes down to special teams. It's been a huge part of this game thus far. We had blocked field goal attempt and earlier in the game. The Marshals, Jarquez Samuel got a hand up and blocked Schwetman's attempt at a field goal. And had a couple of punts that put the opposing offense on the one yard line. Some outstanding special teams play. We're going to get a Hail Mary attempt here for King Cato. We have three receivers to the bottom of the screen. And his best friend, Schuler, number one in that jersey, streaking downfield. Instead, it's to the far sideline into the corner and out of bounds. Well, he had Deontay McManus just overthrew him. Oh, how does McManus get that open? Wow. Wow. That's a great word to sum up what we have just seen in regulation. We've had so much fun. We're going to hang around for some overtime. 59 all. Marshall embroiling the opportunity to play on a New Year's Day with invitation. Certainly both of these teams know what this means. Western Kentucky wanting to be the spoiler. Rakeem Cato working to get his team back with a late touchdown, 59-59. And again, for our casual fans on a holiday weekend, because a lot of folks are home, explain the overtime rules, please. Yeah, they're going to flip the coin here to see who gets the decision that they want the ball. Usually, if you win that, you're going to go defense first because you want to see what the other team does. You get the ball on the 25-yard line, you get a normal set of downs and opportunities to score. Then the other team gets an opportunity to match or surpass that total. It's like extra innings in baseball. Each team get an opportunity for the 25-yard line. Phone cutting in and out a bit. You win the toss, your choices are offense, defense, and routine at the field. You like Each team needs to get one time out of the line. And every second of the time period, the team must go for two. That's the key after the second overtime period. The teams must go for two on a touchdown. You call the toss. Tense. Tense. You won the toss. You won the toss. Marshall would like to play on that end of the field. There we have it. Leicester, Kentucky wins the toss and will start out on the defensive side, as you explain. Yeah, so each team now will get an opportunity, a possession to score as many points as they can on that drive, and they'll get equal opportunities. If it keeps going back and forth where they match each other's points on those drives, after that second overtime, each team must go for two if they score a touchdown. It's been a lot of offense in this game. Will the defense be able to shut the other down? There you can see the overtime rules. Doc Holliday has watched his offense put up 59 points on this day. By the way, if you're tuning in to watch Yale Providence College Basketball, tune right now to Fox Sports 2, but I promise you this game will outscore that basketball game. So just wait. Cato goes for the home run right away to Fronapple. Overthrew him with intent, I think, Eric Fronapple, the tight end. Oh, they went for a big strike early there. Fronapple was lined in the wing position and ended up running a vertical nine route along the sideline there. It was Cam Thomas, Taryn Williams back in coverage. Cato threw that one away. A little bit surprised they didn't hand it off to Stuart Butler there on first down. They've had success with that. Cato now feels forced to throw again. Across his body, back the other way, eluding, and down the sideline goes Foster with the dive. He finds Bader, or did he? Yes, he did, into the end zone. 25 yards and a touchdown. Boy, Foster eluded. I don't know how he stayed in bounds. Alex Foster, look at this missed tackle attempt by Marcus Ward. Tight rope, stay in bounds, and the effort at the end to get the lead. Ball crosses the plane. 
What a play by Heilig Foster. Cato was special on that play, too. Went to his third read to connect with Foster. The veteran getting the job done. Ooh. Ooh, he's right. <laughs> Hank, who's been outstanding this game, gave his team a scare there. So now Western Kentucky gets the opportunity on the 25-yard line as well to match or better the points that Marshall just put on the board. By the way, as wild as this game has been, that is Marshall's first lead of the contest. Well, we knew it. Doc Holliday, former wrestler, former high school state champ, he said, I've, I've taken that wrestler mentality and pieced together a roster of tough, physically and emotionally tough guys. So there was no doubt that they were going to come back and fight. And here they are in overtime to try to get the job done. Connects now in and out of the hands. Jared Dangerfield from Dowdy couldn't hold it. Man to man coverage across the board. Marshall. They go to Dangerfield, who's been lights out in this game. Dowdy puts it right where it needs to be. 6'3, 200 pound junior dropped that pass here. You can hear the crowd getting loud. It's been an issue for Dowdy. Pressure. Dowdy, deep leaping grab in the back of the end zone, touchdown! Wow. Jared Dangerfield, 25 yards, how did he do it? Outstanding quarterback was pressured by James Rouse on the play, but Dowdy puts the ball up and Dangerfield climbs the ladder, reels it in with a highlight type play here in overtime. Now the Hilltoppers. They're, They're going, going for the win. win. They're going for the win as it stands. Dowdy was backpedaling on out there, sauntering out as if he was going to get the shot. Marshall said, stop right there, timeout. They get one timeout, I believe, and they've used it. One overtime timeout. So. Let's see if this sticks. I mean, we've talked about, and it really hasn't been at all on extra points, the struggles for Schwetman. Outstanding play here in overtime by Jared Dangerfield. Dowdy throwing one up. As he knows his playmaker just made a play for him after a drop on the play before. Comes back, reels one in. Keep the Hilltoppers right here with an opportunity to looks like go for two go and for the, the win. win. They've marched their offense back on the field. You have to wonder, is it going to be a sprint out towards the bottom of our screen? Western Kentucky going for the victory. Rolling to his right, quick strike, and they did it! Western Kentucky has ended the perfect season into the hands of Willie McNeil. A shocker here in West Virginia, and it is over for Marshall. They end the regular season 11 and 1. Well, they went to it, the sprint out, and it was Willie McNeil. Was the go-to guy the entire time, and look at Dowdy. He knows they just played the route of spoiler, an arrow route, ran to perfection by Willie McNeil. It Corey Tindall in coverage. He took his eyes off his man, put him into the backfield. That's a no-no in one-on-one -on -one situation. Dowdy, McNeil, connected, delivered. As Doc Holliday's thundering herd, no. They just let an opportunity slip through their hands. 67-66 final. So many opportunities to vote for player of the game, but Dowdy threw eight touchdowns. Dowdy, no doubt about it. This guy all game, 34 for 50, 491 yards, a Conference USA record in his own personal career high. I mean, how can you get much better than that?
He shattered records today. Touchdowns for a single season. More than any high topper in program history. This system that Jeff Brown has installed here at Western Kentucky, the way it has picked up the end of the season, outstanding, phenomenal to come away with a huge upset here in Huntington. That is today's Academy Sports and Outdoors Right Stuff player of the game. First time they've ever done it since joining FBS. An incredible day of college football. Unbelievable. That'll do it. That is the final 67-66, nearly 1,500 total yards. Coin wire. My name is Darren Sutton. What an incredible day in West Virginia. Let's get it to Rob Stone, who's in Los Angeles. Rob?